Welcome to the tripod. Welcome to the tripod. pretzels and welcome back to the tripod it's your predictions episode your boys are back talking wrestling and i'm bringing father philly out of retirement just for today heads nxt tells at dub go father philly best two hours of the entire week we're kicking it off with the next idea. of course this is the go home episode to roadblock okay we do open with chaos uh, the entire roster fighting in the hallway, trying to answer Wesley's open challenge. Yabba Dabba Kato plows through the hard R's because there are only two hours left in Black History Month and he don't care. Afro Strange stops him. Then someone leaps over them and jumps in the ring. It's the returning Nathan Fraser. That is one of the best ways for someone to return. I didn't expect that at all. And then we got another fucking banger for the North American Championship. Wesley Black Broccoli versus Nathan Frazier, who's balls deep in Thea Hell, right? Uh, these two seemingly equal. Uh, Book does not like sportsmanship because it's all about checks and championships. Vic. Uh, Book also doesn't know how to say Megalodon. Nope. Uh, biggest shark that ever existed. No commercial picture in picture for some reason. Nathan looks driven, looks hungry, looks... Like medium Tyler Bate, he bringing it. Uh, he looks like he has something to prove. Wes up for this challenge. It was a great match. The crowd was hot for it. Nathan launches Wes off of apron onto a announce table that almost got Vic to say, holy shit. <laughs> a cardiac kick for the win. Standing ovation. It was, it was worth it. Uh, this was a beer cheese match that will be hard to top this week or even month. Uh, Wes retains. Uh, then we get JD creepy ass eye surgery video promo. He can't wait to face against Dragon Off. Uh, Sticks, my God, the opening to this show again, fire! What do you think? For the second straight week, we had a banger of an opening match for the episode. Uh, nice way for them to get to this. Uh, I know the general consensus has been uh, even on the main card that the uh, Championships like the IC title, United States Championship, are becoming like the titles that are showing on TV more. I like the trickle down effect. We're starting to see that now a lot more in NXT with the North American Championship. And you have a really good guy in Wesley that can do that. That can go. The Open Challenge has been a great, always been a great go to. Him doing that has been great. Has given us great matches. This was another one. Uh, you know what you're getting with Nathan Frazier. I mean, the guy can go. Uh, Wesley keeps stepping up and giving hell of good matches. Uh, the back and forth between these guys, I mean, this, I can see them doing this a couple weeks down the road and still put on another banger. Great way to open the match. Uh, you kind of thought maybe uh, maybe Nathan Frazier was going to maybe do some heel-ish stuff because of the the rejecting the, the handshake and all that stuff, but at the end, you know, they they shake, they give a hug, nice little salute from uh, Wesley and, and Nathan Frazier. But just a hell of a way to open up the the Tuesday the Tuesday night card. I mean, NXT, there's one thing that these guys do is that they know how to start off a show and start off with straight fucking fire. And they did it again this week. I'm very happy Yabba Dabba Kato didn't make it to that ring. Uh, Cesar. Your thoughts on the kickoff to this past week's Indexity? Well, like Stick said yesterday, well, not actually, last week, if this didn't start off because it's the last day of Black Hittery Month, and how how does a cross-eyed fuck start this shit off? He got a bunch of niggas fighting. <laughs> yeah, hard R's fighting. Odyssey fighting. Yabba Daddy Kato fighting. Apollo Trash fighting. I'm pretty sure some other nigga who ain't even got a name yet was fighting. <laughs> Fat ass Hank Waller fighting. 
uh, Axiom out here fighting. You know, he, he's he, he's still permanent tan. So I know y'all white folks will call him a nigga. Yeah, I, yeah, out here, out here, these, these niggas out here brawling, scrapping, getting it, doing work, doing dirt, trying to get to that rank to fight another nigga waiting in there with that title. You damn right, you cross-eyed fuck. I see what you was doing. You was teasing all the niggas was coming out there because you was about to have, you was about to have, starting off, the last two hours of Black Hittery Month, you was teasing some nigga on nigga action, two mandingos going in the ring for Jackson Championship, shucky ducky, quack, quack. That's what you wanted. That's what you wanted. I know that's what you wanted. But nah, nah, you was like, I'm going to give y'all a treat. I'm going to give y'all some white on black. And I'm going to have the nigga win for the last day of Black Henry Month. A nigga going to get his reparations over a whitey in the middle of that rag. But this was a great matchup. It was a great match. You know what, Cross <laughs> Eye you, you put on a banger, boy. You put on a banger because you almost got me. See, I know you, though. I know you. You almost got me. But God damn it. God damn it. Wait, where's, some Nathan, where's, some, uh, where's some Nathan merch going to come out? I got to get a, I gotta get this cracker shirt. This cracker. I, mean, I got to get Mellow and Trick first. The, you know, first of all, I gotta get them, and then maybe some Tyler Driver. But but you you climbing up that list, boy. Nathan Frazier, you you climbing up that list. Well, oh, Axiom too. If Axiom gets shirt, Nathan Frazier, no, you climbing up that list, boy. You climbing up that list. I gotta get you a shirt, boy. But yeah, it was a good ass match. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Booker T was skeeting over there, losing his voice in the first part of the match. Yeah, Vic almost cursing. You know, about to get fired. But you know, Vic saw that. You know, Michael Cole and them don't give a shit no more, and they talking about Banger Brothers. Ain't nobody getting fired on Trips Watch. So, uh, yeah, you, you couldn't start off at NXT better than this. This, this was this was this was what we like to call back in the day. You was an old tripod member. You were old tripod member watching NXT. This is what we like to call low, low free money for that ass. Yeah, yeah, because this this should have been on that trash ass roadblock, and th this this should have been on live event. Stand in the level, but it was free money Tuesday, like back in the day, girl. This shit was good. And by the way, if Vic would have cursed, uh, Prince Albert would have dropped a dime on him. Moving on, BJ in the locker room. Uh, Jensen said things are weird after Valentine's Day. Jensen growing his chili meat out. Briggs says, You all right? Let's go fight the Durka Durkas. Uh, furry denim Kenzie. With country ass Hank backstage, Axiom pissed that Hank kicked him in the head earlier, trying to get to the ring. Who Hank says it was an accident. Ax Axiom says it's not like you were going to win anyway. Uh, Violation. Pull apart, <laughs> pull apart ensues. Uh, Curry connection with Jinder versus BJ, no Fallon. Book says focus on the match, not the sniz. Curry connection fighting in their dresses. Looks like Jensen's head is not in the match. The Curry connection take out Jensen. For the win, Cesar, we had BJ in the locker room to kick things off. Of course, yeah, things man. were weird with Kiana for some reason. Found, and then we had, uh, hmm? No, go ahead. Kenzie oh. interviewing uh, Axiom with Hank and then the actual Curry connection versus BJ. <clears throat> yeah, you see, see Fallon, Fallon out here fucking up. She fucking up the rotation. She fucking up the plan. See, Jensen's supposed to be getting in with Kiana. You know, getting in good, a little Valentine's Day, you know, get him some a little loving. She's probably gonna give him the over the pants HJ, you know, to start out with because her brother was home. You know, can't you can't be blowing her back out with her brother down the hall. Come on, man. That, that nigga might come in there with a the back. You know what I'm saying? So Jensen's gotta use Kiana to get his stroke game up. And then fuck the assistant, you know, give her that good pipe. You know what I'm saying? But Fallon fucking it all up. He can't get no practice in. You you can't go to the assistant with some weak stroke game, okay? Okay. He got he got pre cum leaking out of out of his junk, getting his jeans all wet. You know what I'm saying? He ain't used to getting no good attention from no loving. He got to get his loving up first. You know what I'm saying? You just can't go with it with no weak pipe. That girl, that girl Latin, and she know Taijutsu. She might break your dick off. <laughs> dick got to be strong, man. You got to run through some hoes first, man. And he trying to get through his so he can get with the assistant. Colin fucking up. She cock blocking. Then she was cock blocking. You can't just be out here cock blocking, Fallon. Come on, come on, son. Come on, son. Then, uh, well, what well, well, next up there? We got old Hank, Hank and uh, Axiom talking with McKenzie. Yeah, she she did him. She did him five denim, like they they still in Ottawa or some shit. You know, she she representing. You know, old Hank. Hank was just like, "Yo, man, it's a brawl." Yo, Axiom, Axiom, man, that, that's kind of a bitch move, man. It was a brawl. It was a fight. 
was that nigga for himself. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, he wouldn't have been mad. He wouldn't have been mad if, if it's, you know, two for two taco night because he's Spanish at the at the Mexican, you know, at the Mexican, you know, bar, you know, extra margarita. And somebody to punch him in the eye to get extra, you know what I'm saying? Get an extra shot of Patron. He know the deal. You got to be, your head got to be on a swivel. You got to look left, look right. He won't, he won't think about Hank. He's like, oh, here you go, fat ass Hank. He ain't going to do nothing. And then you got kicked in the head. That sounds like a you fuck up to me, playboy. That don't sound like Hank. Hank was Hank, Hank was going for uh what's a cracker? Gabagool lag and uh, and, and old uh, an old fake toothless Timmy, watered down toothless Timmy. And you know what I'm saying? And then actually caught a kick to the jaw. Hey, that shit happened. That shit happened. As for the match, yeah. Th this is just some uh author authors of trash curry edition. I don't care. I don't care. The the, the story backstage of Jensen trying to get some draws is more entertaining than the Curry connection. Now, now if Jinder was in the ring, you know, maybe I'd pay attention. Little Maharaja, you know what I'm saying? Give him respect. You know what I'm saying? Slapping crackers with the Coloss. But yeah, I, I ain't care. And what was after that? Was it something after that? Six. We had BJ in the locker room furthering that story with Kiana. We had uh, Kenzie interviewing Hank and Axiom. Walks in. We had the Curry connection versus BJ. Your thoughts, sir? Yeah, I mean, head wasn't in the game. I mean, his head's not not on on, on the task. His head, end. no, both, <laughs> both. I mean, but I mean, you good tag team. If you got a really good tag team partner, she's gonna try to get you back in it. You're gonna be like, hey, we it's the road to WrestleMania. We gotta try to get, we gotta try to build our stock up for to get uh get ready for standing to deliver. And we gotta get back former NXT UK champions. We gotta get back. We gotta start climbing that ladder. We gotta get on the right, on the on the fast track to stay and deliver. And it, and it starts and it starts tonight. We got into share. Um, yeah, Hank and uh, Axiom, man, Axiom just got a got a straight straight shot, man. That stuff happens in a big brawl, like Caesar said. You got twenty people, all of them going. I mean, hell, we're still trying to figure out who uh who threw the cake. You know, the famous, you know. The pie, Kevin Owens. Yeah, yeah, we still don't know about that. At least Axiom's got some closure on his. Actually, I did read an article where if it went for like another like couple of years, uh, apparently Vince was just going to take credit for that. Well, of course, that's a real article. Vince Vince said it himself. He was going to write a storyline and take, and uh, he was going to take credit for that. Of course, he would. It's Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. He was in there seeing what the what he's paying a couple million dollars for catering for. Once to go in there. Big brawl breaks out. He's like, "What the hell? Are you guys throwing throwing all this food for? Fine, I'll throw I'll throw a huge cake that I probably paid a couple hundred bucks for. That Don't get looks like ten dollar cake that you get at at uh mm -hmm. you know Aldi's, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, you got to stray. It is what it is. It happens in a brawl and uh, tag team match. I mean, this is just like Caesar said. This was just a builder get into sure win. You know, head still wasn't in the game. He was hoping maybe Kiana would come out. She's not going to come out. Like he, like Cesar said, Fallon's not there. That was kind of a little odd seeing them out there about no Fallon without a legit reason. I mean, hopefully she's she's trying to help build the trust up so they can actually defend those women's tag team championships here coming up in, you know, a couple weeks because, I mean, they're not going to be defending them at roadblock. So maybe here two weeks down the road we'll get them on it. Who knows? Maybe she's. Maybe she's trying to help her boy out. Maybe she's trying to lay that groundwork so that way he can start working on his stroke game to get to the assistant. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's what a good ballet to a good tag partner would do. She'd help lay that groundwork for you. But, I mean, it was it was an okay match. I mean, it's getting to share a win, build maybe a little friction between the tag tag team partners. But, I mean, it was a good win for Indusher. Up next, uh, apparently during the commercial uh, break, Wendy Chu was attacked. I noted that uh, Katana was the one who alerted the doc about it. Um, perhaps uh, Katana attacked Nikita as well. Uh, they're just furthering this whole Nancy Kerrigan, um, Tanya Harding storyline that keeps happening in the fucking parking lot. Uh, Gigi Dolan comes out to Toxic Attraction theme for the final time. She says JC is only after superficial stuff. Gigi getting emotional, talking about her past, her abusive mom, 
Some asshole in the crowd alone was saying, what? What? After everything she said, I wish I could fucking punch his... Anyway, Gigi wins the crowd over. I guess next week at Roadblock, they will be fighting. It was a great promo. Um, Toxic A was good at promos and wrestling, and they look fine. Sticks, what do you think of Wendy Chu being attacked, uh, Katana conspiracies, and then Gigi's solo promo? Yeah, once again, don't hang out in the parking lot. You park your vehicle. You either need to do one, two things. One, get a valet, or two, if you park it yourself, your ass better be running from your vehicle to the door real quick. Otherwise, you're going to catch a stray like uh, Axiom did in that brawl. You, so head got to be on a swivel. In the parking lot. So, uh, and Wendy Chu, she's going to be out for a little bit. Uh, like you said, Katana was the one that alerted. Uh, I believe what was it? Tiffany Stratton had another Tiffany epiphany during that too. It comes up later. But uh, yeah, I mean, parking lot's been dangerous. It's one of the new things kind of in the uh, regime change, you know, backstage with trips on the main roster now with NXT. It's the parking lot with a uh, cross eye. So there's always something. And uh, what was next? GG solo promo. Heck of a promo. Um, this girl is starting to lay the groundwork to become a uh, really good talent. Uh, started with the promo, talking about the uh, her past, her history of her mom. How uh, she prom promised her brother that they, she would make it in WWE and be able to get her and him out of that situation. Heck of a promo. I mean, really good promo. Win the crowd over and uh, got some uh, emotional momentum going into their, her match against JC at a roadblock next week. And she got her TV time. Cesar, uh, the dangerous NXT parking lot has claimed Wendy Chu and then Gigi spilling her heart out to the NXT audience. What'd you think? It's fucking Florida. Why ain't, and it's at night. Why ain't these bitches looking where they going? Bitch, it is Florida. Nigga, you can't even walk around Florida in the daytime. You might get shanked. <laughs> Your ass out there in the streets, in the parking lot, not, do, not doing this. I don't care if that shit two feet from the door. Yeah, they done took. They done took. Who they done took out? Nikita. They took out Nikita. They done took out Wendy. Hell, they took. Well, who did they take out back in the day? Chomper or somebody? One of those people. Yeah, yeah. Fucking no, it was Alistair. Back no, remember, office. remember um the Brown Order were kidnapping motherfuckers in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alistair got taken out. The Brown Order was kidnapping niggas, throwing them in trunks. Uh the nigga from the Brown Order got thrown in the trunk by Tony D'Angelo. Yeah, then the, the other nigga got kidnapped. The, the AJ guy got kidnapped by the Brown Order out the damn out the damn lot. Uh, shit, Dexter had 18 cops pull up in the lot, kidnapping his ass out of there. Still, still smacking lips on that bitch before he had to go. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, uh, Mandy got kidnapped in her own Range Rover in the damn lot. Uh, you, you can't trust the lot, bro. You they just put out their it. own DVD special of NXT's yeah. parking lot violence. <laughs> yeah, shit. Hell. <laughs> Fucking Velveteen trying to kill Adam Cole in the damn lot. Baby. Baby. Damn, boy, that lot is dangerous. Fuck that lot. I ain't going nowhere near that lot. Wait, oh, fucking, uh, fucking Undisputed Era got kidnapped in a limo in the lot. <laughs> like, nigga, I ain't trusting that lot as far as I can throw it. And I can't throw some in because that shit's already down. So fuck that lot. Look both ways. Carry a flashlight, a mace, and a damn gun. See, you see, you wouldn't go kidnap if you'd have shot a bitch in the lot. Then I can retire and not watch this shit no more. Uh, Gigi <coughs> in the ring by herself. Yeah, great promo. Pulling out the old heartstrings. Douchebag in the ring. He should have he should have yelled Darby. That would have been funny. Not yelling what. But I digress. <laughs> I digress. I would have laughed at that. Jesus. <laughs> I think it would be like, what? Darby. <laughs> oh. I, fucking twirling a tampon in the fucking bro, I would have died. I would have died. But no, uh, this should lead up to a should lead up to a good match here at a roadblock between these two ladies. 
Yeah, you know, you know what I like to say, man, Greg. You know, when the bitches, you know, they, they used to ride together, you know, be together in the ring. Best friends. Best friends. And once they start fighting each other, the matches have been gold, baby. I mean, you can't name any best friends that had a match together that they had had a sad ass match. No, them shits be tens. They be damn blockbusters. Uh so this this one, you know, depending on how ruthless they want to go, could be a real good ass match. Well, yeah, man. Remember, JC didn't hold back when she stomped Gigi's fucking face. Gigi probably let her. She was like, like, kick me in the face. She was like, no, hit me, bitch. Kick me in the face. I'm going to be gone for a week. I'll rest it up. I want to lose a tooth like man, Gria. JC. Gria. Yeah, you girl. I got to watch the tripod. I want to be like my favorite tripod host, saying, Gria, kick me right in the teeth. Kick me, I'll... kick me with those Timberlands. Hit me right in the square with the heel. Yeah. yeah, get them Tim boots out, bitch. Don't wear no Uggs, you dusty bitch. Well, gentlemen, um, I know you've seen it, but hold on. Let me show the crowd, the pretzels. Up next is my favorite segment of the entire week. It's Chase U time. Uh, Duke makes amends with Thea, kind of. Their cheesy 90s music playing when he was talking to her, like Carl Winslow is teaching Eddie a life lesson. Uh, Duke is sorry for being disrespectful to Thea, but he meant every word about the university. Andre starts class, but is interrupted by a jism message, which might be my favorite segment of the week. Uh, I noticed as, as an editor, there are certain shots, camera angles, and perfect timing involved with a great segment. This was cheesy as fuck, B-movie acting, and I loved every minute of it. And the cover of this week's tripod, for sure, is going to be Thea's reacting faces were gold i fucking loved it uh jism getting uh in the heads of duke and thea andre twitching face oh man this was fucking great i, I loved it i loved every second of this segment uh and i was right this was my favorite segment of the entire week cesar what did you think about this chase you and jism uh fucking b-movie segment that i couldn't get enough of did you just say and I was right. This was my favorite segment of the week. <laughs> yes. Yep. My favorite segment of the week was this. Yeah, so, so you are correct. This is your favorite this segment. This is mine because I seen the rest of the week in wrestling. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You, you have your opinion and you are correct about your opinion. Yes. Uh, but no, no. Yeah, old, old adult Bretzky trying to get class in session and yeah, Duke, Duke trying to, old Dukey trying to holler at Thea Hale and be like, nah, we straight. And then old Bucktooth and her three assholes get up on that screen and they like to talk with the with the glow in the dark skeet on their mask and shit. I don't even know what that shit was saying. I, I ain't got time to read it. But yeah, they interrupted. And now old, old Andre and Chase, he getting in more screen time. You know, old Dolph Breast getting in the ring. He getting more screen time. So he got a fight at the damn... Uh, at the damn uh, cable live event. I mean, it's not premium, so I don't know what the fuck they call it. Bullshit. Uh, cable live event on uh, next Tuesday, fighting old Joe Gacy in the middle of that ring. I'm pretty sure Chase U and Jism going to be out there and all types of fuck shit is going to happen. All Teeth Ava as well had a... They all had their speaking parts, but um, of course, All Teeth Ava had to look extremely intense. Very yeah. funny. Sticks, what did you think of this segment? The continued disrespect and teardown of Chase U continues. Uh, scaring the bejesus out of Thea. Uh, still trying, still steering Duke out of Chase U. And raising the blood pressure of Andre Chase himself. Mm -hmm. this, was a really, this was a good promo. I mean, this might have been one of the better ones that uh, Joe Gacy and Schism have uh, put together on TV. And... To continue to pound away on the cracks at uh, Andre Chase University has been really good for them. I mean, this has been a really good launch point for Schism as a as a faction, and uh, we'll see where it goes next next week at Roadblock. I mean, this would be to be able to say that you've torn tore down Chase U would be pretty big mm -hmm. accomplishment for uh, for Schism. So. This could be a pretty big road uh, launching pad for them as a faction. 
Uh, if Duke does turn on everybody, I hope they replace them with someone because I don't want this Chase U stuff to go away anytime soon. I'm sure Bretsky would agree if he was alive. Up next, Dijak responds to Tony D's jailhouse street fight. To win, you have to lock your opponent in Enzo's shark cage. Uh, the final boss, Mako Satamora versus Zoe Leatherface. Uh, Roxanne joins commentary. Uh, Book blows his load under the desk. Mm -hmm. These two put on a great match. The final boss has not had a bad match, and Zoe's face can take a beating. Uh, God already did a number on it. Uh, this match does get a commercial picture and picture break where Zoe takes charge. Roxy sleeps with her title every night, she says. Probably smells funny. I'm picturing her bare ass on the title. A title keeping that donk warm. Uh, the final boss puts another dent in Zoe's face for the win. Uh, Roxy Mako face to face in the ring sticks. Um, your thoughts on the jailhouse street fight rule, which I'm sure we'll go over in predictions, and then the final boss whooping up an old Zoe. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be a little bit different. I mean, I just figured it was this could be another kind of street fight, but uh, actually have to lock your opponent in that uh, Enzo shark cage, and it has a different kind of wrinkle to it. So it, it could be it could be pretty good. Looking forward to it. Uh, final boss and Zoe, hell of a good match. I mean, both women, veterans. You find out that uh, Roxy sleeps with her uh, NXT Women's Chastity Belt every night. So, imagine that's got to be that's got to be nice little pictures that'll show up sometime, maybe on uh, OnlyFans or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, great match. Both women are veterans. Both women are really good wrestlers in the ring, and they put on a really good women's match, which. When you're in NXT, if you aren't a good women's wrestler, probably not going to see USA TV time. I mean, you'll see Cock Peacock mm -hmm. TV time on Level Up, but mm -hmm. I mean, this is a really good women's match. Uh, Final Boss gets the win, a little momentum going in the roadblock against uh, Roxy, and not a bad match at all. Well, speaking of Level Up sticks, uh, Tatum Paxley and the uh, warrior chick i forgot her name actually had a decent match on there i saw some clips of it wasn't too bad uh cesar your thoughts on the jailhouse street fight and then mako versus zoe yeah lock a nigga in a cage all right yeah sure all right whatever that's dumb uh yeah we got gonna have a mob boss and we got a guy who's a renegade cop terminator nigga all right and, and so we got either gonna lock the mob boss in the cage or we're gonna lock the police in the cage but other than that, there are no rules. So, yeah, they're just going to fuck each other up with some fuck shit. This, this, we can go ahead and stamp this match fuck shit certified, okay? Let's get that shit out of the way. Yeah, go on, hit, hit the stamp. Mm -hmm, yeah. Let me get a little wet here, girl. It's been, it's been a while since I hit this. You know, my stamp been a little dry. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's going to be fuck shit certified. And then, yeah, how, how you got to lock it? Just close the door? Or is there going to be like a chain and a lock? Is a nigga going to have to turn the key? Is a ref going to have a key? It's gonna be a big ass key, like like a Disney movie key, where a nigga gotta have it with two hands and turn the lock. Uh huh. I, I help me, help me find out. Somebody just gonna go to Lowe's and get a twenty dollar master lock and some chain. Who's to say Dijak, big legged ass, can't break the lock by kicking this shit? Like, does he have to be locked in there for a certain amount of time, or is it like soon as the lock? I don't know. I, I guess we are gonna figure this shit out next Tuesday. But I digress. Uh, yeah, Leatherface. And final boss, final boss out here showing you hoes why she's final boss, okay? Okay, she came out there whooping ass like ain't never been whipped before. She don't care who it is. Bitch been wrestling since longer than than uh, Sangria been alive, okay? I think the, they said the bitch been wrestling since she's 17. Final boss is 86 and a half, okay? Okay? <laughs> and she still look good. She still look good for 86. That bitch was throwing Zoe Leatherface ass around, bro, and whooping her monkey ass like monkey ass ain't never been whipped before. Damn, Final Boss been wrestling 60 years. She, she could take the years she's been wrestling and get Social Security with that shit, okay, if, if the government won't fucked up. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Bitch, bitch could retire, okay, like actually retire on the job. They should just pay this bitch uh, to sit home and not whoop bitch's ass in the ring, okay? That's how good this, Final Boss This is. woman could walk in. She could walk in to... Uh... Did he freeze? <laughs> you you froze for a second. I was waiting for, the for like three seconds. Like, huh? oh. yeah. This woman, 
This woman could walk into AEW, and as soon as she walks through the door, they would give her the women's championship belt walking through the door. And the TNT title. Yeah, that too. Hell, give yeah, her right. I'll throw, throw the uh, Ring of Honor television championship too. Yeah, right. Damn, final boss been been around so long doing what she do. Bitch, she was there when they made the first stamp that says Made in China that comes on all your electronic shit right now, okay? She actually drew that shit up and said, here, put this shit on everything. They was like, God damn, that's why she the final boss. She tell everybody what to do. All right, bitch ain't even start on level one. Bitch started on level 99. She final boss. Okay, quit fucking with her. Been fucking with her for a long time. Uh, this should be a real good match with Roxanne next week. I'm actually excited to see this match. This match is going to be good. It's going to be real good. Uh, the women definitely are going to represent. We got best friends, uh, now enemies, and then we got final boss and Roxanne and Booker T was skeeting all under the desk. Hey, uh, and yeah, I mean, Roxanne probably looked like she fucked with the title on, right? Like she would fuck you with the title on, right? I bet she a freak too, man. She probably like one of these librarian chicks. She all nice and cute and talk all soft. But man, ooh, she could pop rocks me in that bed all she want to, girl. I'm going to pop something off on here too. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Blokes. You know what I'm talking about? Blokes. Blokes. Blokes, though. That's Blokes. Blokes, he know. He know. Roxy is she probably, know. you know, she's you so. That, what you don't know is that there's this button and the title flips over and it's like this giant ball. So it's like almost like a ball and gag championship belt. Ball she's, she's a tiny Mexican chick. You know she sits and spins on it. Mm. Uh, by the way, Mako has been wrestling so long, she ended Bruno San Martino's reign. But I've I digress. I've seen it twice. Because black don't ball. crack and Asian ain't fading. Uh, the cross-eyed kid accepts Grayson's invitation to be on the Grayson Waller effect at Roadblock. God. Uh, Kenzie interrupted by Tiff. By Tiffany Stratton. This nigga here. This country ass bitch. Uh, stay out of the NXT parking lot, people. Uh, Kay and Katana come out of the medic room. They tell Kenzie that it's not looking good. Tiffany accuses them. You know, I just had a Tiffany epiphany. I'm going to be a detective. Uh, Katana going to get a match against Tiffany for the disrespect. Uh, Creed's looking for a third man to take on the Curry Connection. They hit up Damon Kemp. Kemp tells him to fuck off. Yon Maker steps in and offers to be the third. They all bark. Uh, Sol Ruka versus Electra Lopez with Valentina. Uh, muy caliente, carne de culo on display here. Uh, more Electra on my TV, please. Soul botches. Not quite all elite level. Uh, Electra searching for the Nux. Valentina snatched him. Uh, then Electra got her soul snatched. So for the win, Electra berates Valentina in the ring and gets knocked for it, Cesar. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think of... You should have bled like John Moxley. Cross-Eyed Kid <laughs> is going to be on the Grayson Waller effect at Roadblock. Uh, Kenzie, Tiffany, Caden, and Katana. Uh, Creed's with Jan, and then Soul versus Electra. Hey, Cross-Eyed Kid going to show up. They're going to talk. They gonna talk, man. Why you? Why you looking like that, man? Greg? Cross that kid ain't coming back. I already told you what's gonna happen. I already told you what's gonna happen. If you listened to the show last week, you already know what's gonna happen. I told you. You see, Caesar. You can't. You I don't got even the know. Phone call. I got the phone call from Paul of. I mean Triple H. He says NXT is going to Saudi for stand and deliver, and they made one phone call to your boy. So guess who's loosening, I mean, tightening them boots up? It's all cross out. I mean, HBK, I'm coming out of retirement for one last match. Suck it. This is all the work, okay? It's all the work. Mangria is going to be pissed he ain't right. Well, first of all, it's Mangria saying it, so we know he ain't right because he ain't never right. I hope I'm not. I don't want this shit. I've been saying yeah, it for I what? This, told is the, you this is the third week in a row we're talking about this shit. No, you talking about this shit. We all know what's going to happen. And now it ain't going to be Jay White, but I know it's who it's going to be. I know who it's going to be. Dragon Lee. You know it. Xbox, Xbox coming back. <laughs> so hold on. Where's my Xbox eye? No. <laughs> you, need, you need a wig for that, too. I got a wig. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, then all of a sudden uh all of a sudden McGree's new favorite fake tits McGee out here talking about don't stay in the parking lot. And, you know, bitch bitch had an epiphany. 
Yeah, no, you know, that's the first, that's the first bitch. I ain't gonna say my famous line. I'm calling that bitch. I'm calling that bitch bitch. And uh, oh, she out here. There you. Yeah, shut up, man. Shut up, Sangria. I had you an epiphany, hating, epiphany that you was hating on this trick. Ever. You've been hating yeah, on this trick for a year and a half. It's amazing how fast the death of the of the nickname Butter Buddy has yeah, changed. Yeah. She didn't change Flat not up. one thing about her face. And all of a sudden, she oh, gets she's wearing boots. less makeup for sure. I I would have noticed if she would have. You can't get past her neck. What are you talking yeah. about? You don't look. You don't look you at this girl from, past her you, neck. You from the neck down, man. Yeah, yeah, you're more than she's more than tits. She has an ass. Yeah, sure she is, buddy. Sure. Got no ass. She's got an ass. What the hell's wrong with you? She ain't got no ass. I did not she notice got... her ass. Oh, she got all right, white girl ass. Okay, Mangria. Okay. Not she's that like... bad. She's got a, she's not Charlotte bad. Let's relax here. No, no, I didn't she's say not, she was Charlotte or Dakota Charlotte bad. bad. That's I didn't white say girl she was ass. Dakota bad, but she ain't oh booty store. I didn't say she was. I said she has an ass. I didn't say no, no, she no. has no, no, no. the ass. No, no. She has a butt. She does not have an ass. She got an ass. She got a butt. She got an ass. She got a butt. She got an ass. With one T. She got a butt with I'm one just going to loop this for three minutes as our fucking highlight reel. She <laughs> yeah. got an ass. She got a she butt. Got a butt. <laughs> she got an ass. She got, she got a butt. <laughs> Let's see how many people watch it. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know. What was after that? What uh, was the after? Creeds and Yon Maker. Oh, yeah. God damn it. See, see, see. see. Sometimes when people have great ideas, they're great, they're beautiful. Sticks, this is the this is the first time you've ever had a bad idea. Cause goddamn it, Sticks 316. Yeah, I gotta see this asshole on my TV. Sticks 316. He gotta go to the pay window. Why, why, why? You could have had a whole Damon Kemp free episode, okay? Okay. They could have asked anybody. They could have asked, they could have asked that nigga's name. I don't know. They could have just went up to him and had a funny segment. I mean, he probably would have been more entertaining. And then old, then old Yawn had to come in here and be like, ooh, you know, you know, you know, uh, since I don't have a title match, because I'm not going to lose this title till, until I see him. Uh, I'll team with you guys. <laughs> I hope this nigga die. I hope Mello like actually hit him on the back of the neck, <laughs> paralyzes his ass. No, I don't wish. It. I don't want to put that on the universe. Nah, I, I, I don't. I don't. No, no, no. You know, let, let's not put that out in the universe. Put a trick on it. Shoot this nigga. I'm gonna get his shit. I'm gonna put twelve in the beer sheets. I'm a solid twelve. I'm gonna beat my beat that night. That nigga get shot. Bobby. That's all I got to say. Soul versus Electra. You know, every time I see that Soul Snatcher, that shit good. That shit good. You know, they like Soul. Soul getting a lot of TV time. I don't know who in the back likes Soul. Because she ain't got no titties or no ass. They need to send that bitch away for six months. Like, like she has zero black jeans. Like I don't know how them white jeans, them them white jeans must be from sixteen sixty five because they overpowered them black jeans in that girl's body when her parents made her because she ain't get no titties, no ass. She got the daddy. height. She got yeah. the height. That's, That's her all black she got jeans. for her damn daddy was the height. That that nigga, I don't know. Maybe he half and half too. So maybe she's seventy five, twenty five. That's the only way, you know. That's the only way them white jeans took over. You know what I'm saying? I I I don't get it myself. The girl the girl. Girl might be more flatter than Dakota Kai, and that's hard to do. You know what I'm saying? Especially, and then Dakota Kai ain't got no black jeans in her, though. Soul got black jeans. All that bitch got was height and athleticism. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, more power to her. She getting that bread out there beating bitches. But, God damn it. Ooh, that Latin mommy was out there. I mean, this was literally, this was literally all curves. You know what I'm saying? This is an all-curve, S-curve highway. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Electra got them daddies out. You know what I'm saying? She got that butt meat hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Got that little Latin spice coming down to the ring. Look like she stabbed you in your sleep because she woke up in a dream and you was cheating on her and shit. Yeah, that dangerous shit. She know about four, five niggas. That it does happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Rick Rick know what I'm talking about. It does you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Let her know like she know three, four niggas That's and sell how cocaine I'm on the weekend. Missing this too. No. <laughs> yeah, like that bitch would stab you in your sleep and then still cook you huevos rancheros in the morning. Well, I'm sorry, puppy. Yeah. 
Yeah, come eat this. I'm like, girl, but eat that ass. You keep fucking around. You know what I'm saying? Blokes, Bl- Bl- you know what I'm talking about. Blokes, Bl- Bl- you know it. Blokes, <laughs> no, man. Blokes been stabbed by a Latin bitch before. He know what I'm talking about. Blokes get around. Blokes get around. Boy. Uh, boy. Respect. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, good match. Yeah, old bitch stole the nuts. Soul came out of there. Yo, fucking sick. Vic love yelling that soul snatcher. Like, boy, I bet Mackenzie got a mouth on her. Or she is, you know, talks a lot. So Mackenzie probably got that mouth on her because, you know, Sig Vic be yelling that. So at the soul snatcher, he be yelling that shit, boy. He be skeeting under the table when he yell that shit. Boy, he loves saying that shit. So, uh, but yeah, they like old soul. Watch out for soul, man. Soul, soul fuck around, get a partner. She going to win them tag belts. So she going to be going against uh, old Roxy here soon. Uh, maybe a little three-way, a little four-way, some shit like that. Well, Sticks, we're starting from the top. Uh, the cross-eyed kid will be on the Grayson Waller effect at Roadblock. Uh, we get Kenzie, Tiffany, Caden, Katana. Well, I thought they're all K's. Uh, Creed's and Yon, and then Soul versus Electra. Yeah, we got that. Well, where we start off again? I totally blanked. Oh, uh, the cross-eyed kid accepts oh. the Grayson Waller effect invitation. Yeah, I mean, let's hope that Sean isn't gonna wrestle. I mean, he's. He's got a bat. He's got a locker room full of people. I'm sure he could pick from. That would be a great time to get TV time. Hell, you could even pull old Prince Albert from right beside you. Have him go out there for at least a couple minutes, get Grayson over, and keep the momentum going for him for Steam to live uh, at Steam to live or go forward to be the man to maybe challenge. Hopefully, Mello after he beats Jan Maker at Steam to deliver. But anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, we got Tiffany and uh, the former NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. Yeah, Death of Butter Putty. I mean, we see Mangria's interest in uh, Tiffany Stratton has uh, skyrocketed faster than uh, Bitcoin and Dogecoin at the same time. At the same day, so, and uh, AMC, Tiffany, and Tiffany AMC. Stratton. <laughs> this name. He was her first and last name. Country, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this guy, this guy would, anytime she came on TV before she left, it was Old Butter Putty, here she is. She come out in the ring. Daddy's favorite little princess, Old Butter Putty. Now, now he calls her by her name. I'm surprised he doesn't, doesn't say. I'm surprised he doesn't lean in and go that Tiffany Stratus faction. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Stratton. Look at that nigga struggling, struggling his little, struggling his little cum catcher. Talking about Tiff, Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> yeah, look at this nigga. He's got a. Tiffany he's got to look around, make sure, make sure Mrs. Main Green around. Yeah, for I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just edit this three minutes. I'm gonna edit this three minutes and just send, send Mrs. Main Green a text. Man, come get this motherfucker. Come, come get your boy. Get the hook. Get the hook. Hook it, this guy. She got to um, knock another tooth out, Caesar. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah the Creed brothers <laughs> and uh, Dave McCamp. Dave McCamp still alive. That's good to see. Yeah, I'm making not have anything going on because he ain't defending that fucking championship <laughs> on a uh, USA TV live uh, event. So why not get him on there to go with the Creed brothers? Okay. And um, yeah, Electra and Soul Ruka. They are, like Cesar said, they're really high on Soul. She's very athletic, got a hell of a finisher. And uh, yeah, I'm never disappointed with. Uh, Electra Lopez on TV. She got she yeah yeah like Cesar said she gonna stab you. You survived that. I mean she gonna she gonna cook you breakfast in the morning. I mean that's the first date. That's that's usually the that's usually the test. You survive that. She'll the next test is obviously surviving going to meet mommy and puppy. You know that's the that's the end that's the end test. You survive that. Then your marriage marriage uh, material. No, but, no. Uh, she, she ain't got no passport, so we probably got to cross the river. Twelve brothers and sisters, uh, forty-eight Facts. cousins, mm-hmm. uh, the you know, eighteen aunties and uncles, aunties, and uncles, and, uh, tios and tias, tias and, and abuelita, and one abuelita who showed them all how to cook. Yeah, I'm and sure she's armed with a with a bandello of, of uh, chanclas. Damn she's right, got- she got a chancla and a semi-automatic. Probably got an old school pistol, <laughs> little six shooter like Clint Eastwood. Okay. Nigga. Uh, uh, fucking shank in her hair. I yeah, damn right. Yo, but yeah, she get a chunk in her hair. You better watch her fuck out. She fling that shit harder than Batman, nigga. 
all the way across the goddamn shit. Yo, one Abuelita and Batman could clean up Gotham in three nights. <laughs> what a crap. And two bottles of tequila, both for Abuelita, she clean that shit up in two nights. Two nights. That Terramana shit. Yeah, that's that that next, rock shit. Gallus back at the bar. Uh, they hyped about getting revenge against Pretty Deadly. Wolfgang beats up a dude who bumped into him. Uh, Kenzie interviews Pretty Deadly, sporting pleather yes, overalls. Uh, they will face Gallus at Roadblock for the tag championships. Katana with Caden versus. Get this shit fucking out of here. Tiffany Stratton. Uh, book taking picks. Vic says Charmel going to be pissed. Katana flying around, Tiffany looking like a superstar on this female dominated episode of NXT. And I like it. It was good. Good episode. Mid match, Tiffany gets a wedgie, having a whole ass cheek hanging out. Alba and Isla come out to distract. Tiffany takes advantage and takes out Katana for the win with a full spread pin. Damn. Uh, Briggs, serious talk with Jensen. Get your girl back. Jensen doesn't know what to say. Briggs says he'll talk to Kiana for him. Now, this is a new wrinkle I didn't see coming. Curious to see what the next chapter is in this story. It's got the wheels turning. It's like, wait a minute. They're having Briggs talk to Kiana. Mm -hmm. Wow. But that that, way, that way, when he's ready to fuck the assistant, Briggs is going to be like, I got you, dog. I mean, they really don't need to be splitting up tag teams. They need their tag teams. I hope this gets drawn out past stand and deliver, but they might be planting the seeds of a BJ breakup, but I digress. Uh, I, I think they're really high on Briggs. Sticks, Gallus at the bar, Kenzie, Pretty Deadly, Katana versus Tiffany, and Briggs and Jensen. Yeah, Gallus at the bar. I mean, they're shooting pool. Uh, Coffee and Wolfgang. Coffee uh, telling Wolfgang, hey, you know, Pretty Deadly's talking all this shit. You know, we we run the NXT tag division. You know, they had to bring up old old news, old stuff that they did. You know, Wolfgang getting pissed, bangs in that fucking pool shot, then gets bumped by some fucking drunk guy at the bar. Ends up taking him out. Um, what was after that? After that, Kinsey interviews pretty deadly. Yeah, pretty. I thought this was. I thought they weren't going to have a match. It was going to be like a talk to talk at Roadblock that would possibly lead up to a lead up to a match. Because I, I know when I got on to look at look for predictions, it wasn't on there for a tag team match. No, it yeah, they like, said they were going to have a sit down and talk about a match. You yeah. are correct. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that'll turn into a brawl. I mean, pretty deadly out here. The Yes Boys out here with their their fashion forward outfits. Uh, the whole Try the I think I forget which one uh faked the high five to to McKin to Kinsey. You know, she Prince. Prince. Yeah. Um after this was we, Katana versus Yeah. Tiffany. Just, just that. I, I want I I needed you to say that so I could see that. <laughs> I mean, this is a good match. I mean, Tiffany's getting better. I mean, obviously, physically, she's gotten better. In the ring, she's getting better. So uh, uh, she picked up that dub. I mean, Isla and uh, Alba, Mangria's favorite uh, trailer park foreigner, come out, distract for the win. Tiffany makes the <coughs> makes the call that she's gonna that she's next after uh, after the women's match afterwards. So we'll see how that how that goes and. Uh, Backstage, you got Briggs and Jensen. Briggs is Briggs is trying to help his tag team partner out. So this is the thing. Jensen fucks him over in the match. Head isn't in the game. Screws him out of that win. And what does Briggs do? Instead of being instead of being the the you know hurtful, angry guy, you know he comes to him. They talk it out. Then even Briggs after Briggs like, hey, hey, I'll go I'll go talk to Kiana for it. I'll go to Kiana. But like 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 we all like Cesar said. We know where this is gonna go. We know we know what's gonna happen. I mean, Briggs is gonna be on the back burner for when this when when Jensen ends up railing the the assistant. Kiana's gonna have that backup. So I mean, you always you always got Plan B. 
That's the that's the thing. You always got Plan B. That's a new shirt at the Big Brunch Cantina. Plan, oh, plan B is Plan Briggs, baby. Mm-hmm. So see how this goes. What if uh, old Kiana was on the phone with Briggs that one time? She goes, it was my brother. Man, what no. if that was it? That I, They could be planting those seeds. It's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Don't forget they country boys. Uh, Cesar. Do you know how to work a cell phone? I mean, they both know how to use a cell phone. And solar power. No, Cesar, what did you think of Gallus at the bar, Kenzie and Pretty Deadly? And we'll stop there because you'll forget the rest. I don't care about Gallus at the bar. Yeah, they're getting drunk. Yeah, we like drunks. But why are you going to beat up that other man? You drunk too. You was drinking. And then you drink it and you're angry. See, see, I'm not an angry drunk. No, I'm, I'm no, no. Well, no, yeah, I am. But I'm a more funny drunk than angry drunk. But I understand that drunk people will bump into you at the bar. Hell, I'm drunk. I'd bump into people at the bar. Ain't no need to fight, because we all here to drink. Now, if you do some fucked up shit, and we got to fight, then, then, you know, that's just what it is. It's streets, baby. But, you know, whatever. You ain't no need to whoop that crack ass. And, and then you, and you broke a damn mug. You hit him with a damn mug. Well, yeah, and y'all drink steel mugs. Why would you hit that bitch with the steel mug? It would hurt more. You dumb son of a bitch. And then next was... uh. Up Whoa. next was Kenzie interviewing Pretty Deadly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, boy. Yes, boys out here. They talking that shit. Yes, boy. And yeah, Cracker crack, crack went for the high five and then tried to give one to Kenzie and said, hell no. Nah. Bitch was left. Crowd was laughing. It was funny as shit. And then I do remember what was next, just so man Green didn't have to say it with his country ass. It was some ladies fighting in the ring. One of his favorite ladies. But he ain't going to get to say her name because I, I know versus... what's happening next. And I'm going to just keep talking so he don't even get to say it. Against who? Against who? Yeah, no one gives a shit, you dumb motherfucker. You fell for it. So, yeah, it doesn't matter who she was fighting. <laughs> just don't let her. Just don't let her get in the ring and cut solo promos because that very first one was awkward as shit. Oh Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ! But yeah, old old Katana, that damn boy. And you know, you know, for Katana being only what maybe being there a year before, before old. Uh, Butter putty, uh, you know, Katana's Katana's, you know, showing her ass. Has it too. been three years for for uh Katana? So it's been like two or three, yeah. I think it's been three years. I think it was three, yeah. But remember, they didn't get a lot of TV time like her first year, yes, yeah. She she did get a Royal Rumble spot though. I know, yeah, I yeah. She got that Royal Rumble spot early whenever she came out. They always had them put the emphasis that she was on America yeah, Ninja, yeah, Warrior. Yeah, 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 Warrior, yeah, yeah. So but you know, she, she, I mean, because like if if you look at the sizes of them, this was a good match. Yeah, Tiffany throwing the, with the power, uh, Katana hitting her with the speed, with the reversals, always laying on her feet, hitting shit. Oh, it was a real good. I was like, all right, damn, they make this shit seem like, you know, maybe because this bitch sees and she gonna get over on no uh, butter putty. I used and, to uh, call uh, Katana Marcy stunt when she first yeah, started. Mar- <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then you know, you know what? I, I still like I still like both Tiffany's finishers, but the moonsault is more impressive. Uh, you know, she's dealing with a shorter opponent, so that's probably why she hit her with the legs and now or it Vicky McCall didn't get all of it, but is it gonna be enough? And yeah, as soon as uh as soon as Island them came out, as soon as the trailer park bitches came out, I was like, All right, there goes the fuck shit. This is how old Tiff gonna get the dub. Uh we see it coming now. Um which doesn't hurt cause Katana in any way because she's not a singles wrestler. You know, they're still tag team. It looks like they set up a nice feud for them to go with next to get back in the line for the uh, women's tag team championship. So, you know, great, great story building here. Uh, and then even if they want to continue it, not on Roadblock, but the week after, they could always have a uh, Caden fight Tiffany as well. If she feels like she's not getting the disrespect or like, you know, Roxy's like, I ain't fighting you, bitch. You ain't done nothing. Uh, so, you know, you could always have her try to get the get back as well. So I was glad with the match and the storytelling overall. And then, uh, was there anything after that? It was Briggs and Jensen back. Yeah, yeah. See, see, what, this is what y'all don't know, man. This is what y'all don't know behind the scenes. See, this this is what this is what the streets do. See, these these two country boys. This is what we do down in the country. See, see, Jensen got got old girl. He got old girl, right? They little on the rocks, but now he's trying to be like. Hey, dog, I don't know. It's Rocky. And Briggs is like, I see where you're going. See, they talking telepathy. This is how 
You let your man get in and your man to get your man to hit after you hit. See, Chance is going to hit them draws, right? He's going to hit them draws. And then we know he's going to move on to the assistant. But while he's with the assistant, Keanu going to be like, man, Chance ain't been calling me. He ain't been hitting me yet. We ain't going to no date night. Oh, Briggs is his boy. Briggs going to be like, yeah, look, man, we're trying to get these tag team titles going on, girl. He just focused right now. He 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 got his head in the game. He still love you. I mean, we still love you. Because him is me and I is him. And she's going to be like, oh, you love me too, Briggs? He goes, oh, yeah. Big Briggs got nothing but love for you. And he got this love missile for you too. And then he going to hit. And then they both going to tag team the assistant. And then they going to go back with Fallon at the bar, get drunk, and laugh at all of it. And she's going to be like, damn, you fuck them hoes. Y'all my boys. Let's drink. And then they all going to get drunk. Storybook ends, and then they go keep fighting for the tag team championship. See, that's what's gonna happen. I already seen it. I already seen it. I know it. Cesar, Cesar Domus over here predicting the future. Yeah, um, it's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be good. Up next, we get Axiom versus old big country himself, Hank. Uh, this for sure was Hank's best match. Axiom made Hank look yeah. great. I almost thought this was gonna be an upset, but Axiom pulls out the victory when he's rep that good. When ref raised Axiom's arm on the outside of the ring with the camera pointing at the entrance, it almost looked like someone was standing there. No, someone that was there. might have been Nathan uh, Frazier. I don't know. But um, Axiom slapped Hank's thigh and said he was special and then headbutts the thigh. Eh, it's a homoerotic. Uh, vibes, as we head into the next segment, it's Grayson responding to HBK's acceptance of invitation. Please, I'm begging you. Please, for the love that is all that is holy, do not make HBK versus Grayson. Please let this be a swerve. Cross-eyed kid says, I want to fight you, but I know someone who will, and it's hopefully somebody different. Yeah, uh, Cesar, Axiom versus Hank. Yeah, you ain't lying when you I thought I thought old Hank was getting lucky. He had boots, he had clothes on. Damn, now, yo, that knee looked kind of stiff, Axiom threw yeah. too, girl. I mean that shit was wow, and you know book T yelling, book yelling about that pay window, uh, because you know book is book, and we, we love book for what he do, you know. I mean we love Wade, Mad oh, uh, big ups to Wade, because we miss him on Tuesdays, but damn book, book been filling his shoes right and tight, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, yeah, this match was good. That's what happens when you have an A caliber guy like Axiom. Who can work with any any kind of person in that rank? You know, he made Hank look good. Yeah. Didn't it didn't even look like look like bocce or anything? There's like two dudes having a fight. Uh didn't like, you know, as any as any face should, you know, actually may have been hot about the beginning of the match. Hits him with the golden ratio. Uh, you know, gets the pin. Yeah, you know, actually a little sus, but you know, I mean, just wrestling. There's two dudes feeling each other up in the ring. I mean, it's it's all sus. You know, it's Hollywood. We all gay once in a while, baby. You know, Tropic Thunder, Robert Downey Jr. Go watch that if you haven't seen it. It's a great movie. Uh, it says, yeah, man, you're special. You keep wrestling like that, you're going to be something someday. You know, giving Hank some praise. I won't mad at it. But, yeah, there was some there was some crack in the back of the round. I don't know who that cracker was. I, I was too drunk to try to, like, you know, uh, try to dissect it by, like, zooming in or Googling. So I just didn't care. I was like, yeah, he looked white, so it's another cracker. So, uh you know, Black Hittery Month should have been a nigga. Should have been real dark. It's already dark back there. Should have been a nigga. See, then you really wouldn't know who that was. I'm like, damn, who that dull, dark nigga back there? That nigga looked menacing. Like, he stabbed you. But then there's some cracker. So I was like, he ain't going to do nothing. He just going to file his taxes and be white. So, you know. It should have been scripts. Should have been scripts. Should have script. been scripts. Did you see that match they had on, on Level Up? Him and Axiom had a banger two weeks ago. Y'all need to watch that shit. Axiom uh, made scripts look. Axiom made scripts look good. Good. Uh sticks. Axiom versus Hank. Yeah, I mean, this was Hank's best match since he's become an NXT wrestler. And that says a lot about Axiom because not only did he have make Hank look good, but he was still able to hit his move, still look good himself, and pick up that dub. I mean, this was this was a really good match. I mean, we all kind of wondered when Axiom came into NXT how this was going to go. 
and he hasn't missed a beat. I mean, he's had hella good matches, and he just had another one. I mean, I would love to see him get a uh, chance at the uh, – get an opportunity at the uh, – North, North American, American yeah. and I think he'd that's be good who, at that's it. who West need to fight at standing and deliver. You want to have a banger? That's who West need to fight. That, but but you need you need to legit have that on a premium live event. Like yeah. the, you don't you don't put that on you. Don't put that on free. That's too much free money. You put that shit on the cock peacock on a Saturday, and you tell people, hey, hey, this this might not be a main event, but it's gonna be a main event level match. But uh, yeah. hell of a match he had of Hank. Hank looked good. Uh, like the I like the uh, exchange afterwards. Yeah, there was somebody chilling back there, getting a getting a pretty good seat, getting a nice little little peaky at the match. Don't know who it was. Maybe we'll find out sometime down the road. But uh, hell of a match. I mean, really good match, especially for Hank. Really good for him to have that kind of a match. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Nathan wanting to maybe pick up the rivalry again against Axiom or be a tag team, but time will tell because now we're at the main event, gentlemen. It's Tyler Great, the big, strong oi, versus the man who don't miss, Carmelo. You see, name plate? You see that nameplate? With Trick Willie. No, I didn't. Uh, the the match- nameplate said him and then switched out to uh... – Carmelo Hayes. And when it popped up, it said him, like all capital letters in the middle. And nice. then it like opened in the middle. You know, yeah, that's you should... Cross-Eyed Kid's favorite, favorite person in the whole company. Yeah, whole company. Yeah, he loved him some light-skinned niggas. <laughs> the match has barely started, and it's already better than all of Dynamite, I'm sure of it. Uh, the counters, the speed, the chemistry, so damn smooth. These are the two that should be the main event of Stand and Deliver for the NXT Championship. These two should have an Iron Man match. These are the two that can never and will never have a bad match against each other because that's all there is. That's all it's going to be. That's right. We even have old Trick Willie out there watching these crackers flying because you got to be more careful, Cesar. You got to be more careful. Even the commercial picture-in-picture action was awesome. Mello showing us why he is him. Mello hit a draping suplex, bringing Tyler into the ring off of the apron. Then Mello rolls into a pin. I've never seen a draping suplex, by the way. Uh, Trick shenanigans gets him a bop and bang. Mello even counters the airplane spin. Well, the first one. Uh, The crowd is split. Shit, even I'm split. I'd be shouting, both these guys, both these guys, if I was in that crowd. Uh, Trick shenanigans pays off the second time. Mello able to hit. Nothing but net for the win. Wow. What uh, the book, the whole episode, even the bookends made it better. The first match, the last match, the woman domination. It was, this was quite possibly the NXT show of the year. I know we're only in March, but still. Oh, actually, this was February 28th. Cesar, uh, the final day of Black History Month. We had the show open with the black guy winning. We had the show closing with the black guy winning. Niggas what don't do you think of this phenomenal main event? Oh, no, this was great. If you had to pick this match or the first match, better match. This match. I mean, because you gave the first match beer cheese. So you would give this match beer cheese as well? Remember, I'm taking notes in real time. So okay, okay. That was, okay. that's what I was thinking in the moment. Okay. But then, how are you going to have Tyler... And mellow, and not give that the 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 beer cheese wheel, Caesar. The beer yeah. cheese wheel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no, no shade to Brack the Black Broccoli or Nathan Frazier at all. Oh, that all. was a great match too. But like, if I was voting, this was a ten, and theirs was like a maybe a nine point seven. Like it's 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 there, but it's fucking the presentation. First of all, when that nigga actually came out and that shit said him, I was like. No, no, he put his phone I was, down. I was like, I was like, I was like <laughs> he put nah. his phone down. He's like, I'm watching this shit. <laughs> yeah, man, man. I when I watched this shit, I watched this shit. I was like, no, nah, man, no, nah, this, this. I need to pay attention to this shit. Yeah, I was like, this shit gonna be good. They came out there hitting reversals from the gate, trying to pin each other, spinning time, flipping around the room. 
Yeah, hitting uh, hitting one move but not following up with the second. You know, looking at each other. Trick Willie out there. He's losing his hat, but his dreads is keeping it on. He's putting it back on. He ain't got no shirt on. You know, he just chilly meat out. You know, I was like, this ain't a backstage segment, so why don't Trick Willie have a shirt on? I don't understand. Usually they come out to the ring, they got shirts on. Uh, but, yeah, this is what I'm talking about with dudes like Tyler Driver and dragging off. You can't have as much free money. You realize you had two pay-per-view matches on one show. It was literally 8 o'clock to 8.24, about 8.40 to, to no, 9.40 to 10. You had three more. What is this, Fast and Furious? Y'all niggas robbing banks? Huh? You still in the vault? It was number free money out this bitch. God damn. Then yeah, hit hit even even Tyler Bate out there with the fucking bang old trick Willie hitting it on Mellow. Crack a crack a hitting that fucking uh shit off the top. Yeah, that that fucking uh that suplex. That suplex where he turned him around, hit that shit, then hit him with the cutter. That suplex with the cutter. If he just spun him a little bit more quicker and snapped it, ooh, tell me that shit ain't no fair. You crack you pick crack up on a suplex. But you spin them like this and come down with the cutter. Tell me that shit ain't no goddamn finisher or any other cracker. Tell me if you don't snap that shit real quick, there ain't no damn finisher. About, that shit was really quick about that move. I noticed it didn't look as good, but it's nobody's fault. It's only because Tyler's hair was covering everything. Everything, so, yeah. So, so Mello did have it. It's just you yeah. couldn't see it because his fucking his mane of mane hair was uh, fell down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's what I'm saying. Cause like because he picks him up and it looks it just looks like he's holding him. But yeah, he does twist him. Yeah. But like it, it was oh my god. It just didn't look like it was one fluid motion. But if that if you can somehow get that to one fluid motion looking, that looks like it would be a really dope finisher. Like yeah. especially you start off with a kick, come in there and just like bam, hit a cracker with a finisher. Tyler Bates sold sold that uh code breaker. He had his feet way up in the air, yeah, his head down like that. He even like pushed off with his arms to give it more pop and then move forward for that, uh, for the nothing but net. I mean, God damn boy, this, this kind of shit. Yeah. Look, let's get this title off Braun and let's get these championship matches going. Get the fuck out of here. Go up to raw and be boring and lose to Jeff Hardy in like eight seconds on raw, like fucking carrying cross did with his bitch ass. And let's get these matches popping in NXT. I need some more Tyler Driver and Mello. I need some Dragon off Tyler Driver. I need some Dragon off Mello. I need hum- Jumongous Dome. I need all these crackers to come step it up. I need somebody to take that belt off Wesley. Let's get Cracker Lee up in it. Woo, Cracker Lee. We know Cracker Lee and Mello can go. They was fighting for that title too, man. They was fighting for that North American title. Come on, man. We need some more of this shit. And uh, yeah, this, this, this NXT is back, Jack. I don't know how they don't do numbers because this, this shit is good. Yeah, I'm it's glad really it's really out. a bunch of Vince haters just watching. Because if you love wrestling, if you love wrestling, you saw a show on Tuesday. The women showed out. Yep, showed off. the The promos was good. Nagria jerked it to old old butter pudding. There wasn't a bad segment. There was nah, no there wasn't bad, a bad segment. segment. She told your dumbass stay oh, on the line. Yawn. Well, well, no, yeah. that was that was, even that was kind of funny. That because, was even funny because they made fun of Julius and yeah, they for, at him. yeah, he was mad because he had to humble himself. Yeah, Brutus, Brutus is hilarious as shit, and yeah. Brutus is the fun one. And he, yeah, look how mad he is, dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> and so yeah, that's even funny. And so there wasn't a bad part. Uh, I mean, I mean but you're right, you're right, Cesar. Um, I don't care about the ratings. I care about NXT, yeah. but I did see that it pulled five hundred thousand. This fans. this was a go home show. Yeah, this, this was, was a go home show. Uh, it makes you want to watch next week. Yeah, next week is going to be great as well. Those those matches are going to be fire. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know what else I can say, man. This well, shit was sticks, good. Sticks bring us home on the main event of this week's NXT. Yeah. Gentlemen, we have our first candidate for match of the year, and like you just said, man, like you said, man, yeah, we got two. Nah, fuck that. We got yeah, two. There was there was one. There was there was these two tonight, and I believe there was one more. Uh, I'll I'll think of it. But I mean, I this one, Broccoli good. versus Dijak was goddamn. It was good. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, this was 
we talk about how this could main could main event stay in the liver. Boys, I think this could be co-main night two WrestleMania. You yeah. could do this as the match before you were to do Roman Reigns, Cody Rain, Cody Rhodes. And you would not miss No, a- they might they might suck the air out of the room. I don't know. Remember like how CNN and AJ used to do on pay-per-views before the main event? This would suck the air out of the room. I mean it, it could it could and, and but I mean with Roman Reigns you would still have all the you can still have like the bloodline stuff, so that would probably maybe bring the air yeah. back in. But I mean, in ring, I mean, these guys, whew, this is, I mean, this is a match we could have right like Tuesday, NXT after staying delivered. I mean, this would be a banger of a match. And this was a banger of a match. Both guys can go. Mello is, I mean, we have talked about this. We've all know how good Melo had been first NXT breakout uh, contract winner. There's just been something about this guy, and he has just gotten better. I mean, every every episode, every month, every premium live event, you throw Trick Willie with him, Trick and Melo gang. You got that. I mean, you got so many avenues you can go with this guy. Tag team singles, he wouldn't they he wouldn't miss a beat. You throw him in with the great with Tyler the Great, Tyler Driver. These guys put on a I mean, they didn't even talk about it throughout the whole episode. This is this was a premium live event, main event match. And these guys went out there. You had the hype before the match. And these guys went out there and they still hit it out of the park. Hell of a match, like you guys had said with the with the top rope move. I mean, these guys, phenomenal move, phenomenal in the ring. And I mean, Mello picking up that dub gets them a little bit more momentum for a potential stay and deliver match. He even cut cut a, a quick promo looking into the camera while NXT went off off the air. I mean, this guy. Yeah. I mean, this guy. I mean, he is him. I mean, the the from the from the nameplate to the quick promo he cut at the end of the end of the match. If this guy is not the guy, and I'm willing to to stake everything I have to it, this guy is going to be the guy that beats Yon Maker. You bet. He, if he isn't the guy that does, then there's. I mean. I would really hate to see who they think the guy is. That, if, that if they is. give Braun the Oscar treatment and they just like call him up and he just relinquishes the title, it's bullshit. It's, it's, it's going to be, be the biggest piece of bullshit. It'll be the greatest disappointment in probably wrestling history for quite as a time. Is that one clip of The Rock on TikTok? This is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen. I swear well, to God. They're, they're, they're going to they bring Karrion Cross back to NXT to take out Braun Britain. No. <laughs> I don't care. Um, no, no sticks. The other match of the year candidate was Tyler Bate versus Axiom. It was at the end. Oh of- yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, the end of January. Fuck yeah. that shit was good. That was some good shit. But gentlemen, we have a no, not a premium live event, just a TV special. It's Roll Cable, Cable Live event. Cable. We are going to make our predictions for old Roll Block that I'm definitely going to lose in no particular order i took caesar's advice and jumped straight on wikipedia you damn right and i listed this shit we're going to kick things off with the jailhouse street fight it's the thin boss man dijack versus tony d from nxt um i'll curse somebody first uh let's yeah. see this is a jailhouse street fight and dijack's whole gimmick is he's bringing justice he didn't win against Wes. I believe he will take out Tony D to try to get a rematch against Wes. So I will curse old Dijak. Dijak's going to win, according to me. All right, guys, you're both picking Tony D. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Cesar, Cesar, uh, what's your pick for? Uh, I mean, everything you said is literally technically correct. <laughs> like they brought this man back and he lost his first premium live event. Uh, to Wes, who they trying to build Wes. Uh, and, and credit to Dijak for breaking his fucking middle finger 90 degrees. And he's literally like back like a week later. 
uh, fighting and shit. Um, yeah, I don't know because I don't know where they're going with Tony D. I felt like they gave up with him. He was doing all these backstage things, and then he interfered in that match and got like sat on by Dijak. I, I'd like I like I want to pick Tony D because I feel like they're gonna build him back up, but they need to do something with Dijak. Like Tony D is already there. He can be. He's the Don. He, they gave him a thing. He has an underboss. This can still go on if he beats Tony D. He, he maybe he's gonna lock up Tony D and the underboss. I don't know what Dijak's. Well, do. you did say this is the fuck shit certified match. Yeah, it's a fuck shit certified match. So, so to Stacks. me, it, it's it's half and half. I know Stacks will be there. Uh, I still think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say Dijak. They got to give him a win. All right. He needs a win, like a big win, because he's just been beating up people. Uh, I I think I know Tony D's probably gonna win. I'm still picking Dijak. I'm going with the underdog. I'm going with Dijak. Stixie drip drip. Dijak Tony D. D. Jailhouse street fight. How is this going to turn out? So. Let me get this straight. Both of you guys are picking Dijak. Is that correct? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I'm picking Tony D. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be the guy that beats Wesley for the North American Championship. And that wow. this match, oh yeah. I think they're high on him. I think it pro I think he probably would have been further along if he didn't have his injury here a while back. I mean, let's just look at this. Him and Stax were going to answer that North American Championship open challenge until die jack basically took them out so they're gonna settle this business this business and then i think tony d is gonna be the guy so i think it starts with this match and if and, it, and he ascends and goes forward so i'm picking tony d interesting interesting it's gonna, be, it's gonna be the underboss he's gonna throw them both in the cage and lock them up and then he's gonna go after wesley Anything is possible at this moment. Um, up next, based on my favorite segment of the week, Chase U's Andre Chase versus old Joe Gacy. Joe Gacy. Um, we're gonna start with sticks. What is going to happen? What are your thoughts, sticks? How is this gonna turn out? Are we waiting until the to the end to do our caveats and stuff? Yeah. 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 Okay. Joe Gacy's gonna win this match. Okay. Joe right. Gacy. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I well I, my caveat's in this match. So Okay, okay. Caesar, uh, what's gonna happen? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, they're they're gonna give this shit to old fucking Joe. This is gonna be some trash. But they're giving this to Joe Gacy. All right. Uh well. uh Dalt is still paying his dues, taking some L's, but uh there's too many people out uh, there's too much fuck shit. There's gonna be too well, much. Let, fuck let shit. me lay the story out. We got old Dookie who's hating on Chase U. I'm still not even sure why he's there. Maybe he felt like he was floundering and he needed to leech off of somebody. So he leached off of Andre. He saw that he can't take over. He's resentful against Andre. Um, He's a slimy asshole. He could potentially cost Andre this match, yelling or arguing with Thea because Thea's scared of all, all teeth Ava. Grow up, grow up. And then Andre looks over the road. Would you quit yelling at her? And then Gacy hits his... Uh, plus size fucking lariat. Yeah, yeah. And then on the other side, you got the schism, the jism surrounding the ring. It's a numbers game, boys. Uh, Joe Gacy is going to pull this out for that reason alone. I'm as well picking Joe Gacy. The numbers game always wins. Um, up next, it's toxic attraction imploding. It's Gigi versus JC. And wow, okay, let's lay this one out now. All right, it's Father Fitty's woman, the breakout woman, JC Jane. Yep. Uh, she's good at promos. She's a great heel. She was she's always been a great heel. Um she basically punted fucking JC uh, Gigi in the face. Like, like we all know, best friends are gonna beat the fuck out of each other. This is gonna be a good match, possibly a botch, who knows. Not all elite level, but if we have Gigi, Gigi's the face going into this. Crowd is behind Gigi, except for that one guy who's yelling what. Uh, the crowd is behind Gigi. They want Gigi to win. This is their first time ever facing. I think this is going to continue until Stand and Deliver 
I think JC is going to cheat to win. So I am going to pick Father Fitty's chosen one, JC Jane. Uh, Cesar. Um, yeah, as we all know, JC, if you take all three of them, JC was the one unknown. She even said that in her promo. People knew who Gigi was. She made a name for herself. And yeah, G, J, uh, Gigi's got the crowd and she's the face. So, of course, they would have, they don't need to build the face because she's a face. Face needs to chase. So, they need her to face the kicked in. No. Yeah. So, they need to build the heel. So, for that reason, I also believe JC is going to win. But okay. if when it does continue and they get to like a big stakes thing, like, something that's where gg is the big victory so it could go to stand and deliver as well because it'd only be what a month till stand and deliver yeah they could still flesh this out uh you know they always got to have a couple things here and there um maybe even they both pick a partner tag match uh that's where gg could get a win and then that's uh, right look look bitch look all right you won one i won one let's have this out and not fucking speak to each other again this is going to elevate one of our careers. No, no fucking even have a hardcore TLC, whatever the fuck you want to have kind of match. But I think JC is going to win uh, at the pay-per-view. And uh, she's going to be the one to go with the dub. And then, like, of course, she'll probably just stand over and yell. And then Gigi will pop up, probably slap that bitch and be the one walking out of the arena while JC lays flat in the ring. So it kind of evens out, but it kind of doesn't. Yeah, I could for sure see this uh, having a stip at Stand and Deliver, like loser leaves NXT or something stupid. Oh. And leading up to this, they could have another pick your poison mm-hmm. deal going in. But Sticks, are your thoughts on uh, Gigi versus JC? I think Gigi Dolan's going to win. I think she wins. Wow. Uh, maybe sometime here on TV, they do some kind of match where they determine number one contender for uh, Roxy, a stand to liver, like a fatal four way or something like that. JC costs GG that match. Then we get the blow off at uh stand to liver. And I think maybe that's when maybe JC goes over or maybe GG goes over. I, don't know. I think GG goes over because I mean, we've kind of already seen JC in the ring. And I think this is when we see GG in the ring. And I think they might be a little bit higher up on, GG than they are on JC, but I I think GG is going to win this match. See, I I could see I could see as a uh, JC wins and then like GG is like, you know, in the corner or something, and JC goes for that stomp to her face again, and that's where GG rolls out of the ring, hits her with like a finisher, and walks out. So she leaves GG, she leaves JC like done in the ring. But she lost the match on like a fucking roll up with the fucking yeah she misses or she misses the stomp in the corner. Gigi rolls her up with the most deadliest move of all time. Yeah, one two three well, could be that too. Continues on to it, it could be that too, but I feel like that's gonna happen after the match. I feel like JC's gonna roll her up and like try to pull tights, and that's how she gets the dub. Or she holds onto the ropes. That's how she gets the dub. And then Gigi's gonna be in the corner like, what the fuck, ref? You didn't see it. And then JC's gonna try to sneak the stomp while she's looking at the ref. Oh, okay. And she rolls out the way. She misses the stomp. She hurts her leg. GG, bam, slams that bitch. And is like, fuck you, bitch. And then, like, walks out the ring. So, either way, yeah. either way, I can kind of see that now. Um, but, you know, you know how this is. We're, we're putting more thought into this match than the entire Revolution predictions. I guarantee no, go ahead. Uh, Up next, Cesar. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Uh, Tony Skeets uh, just pulled the plug on Cesar's electricity. Uh, Sticks, you well, yeah, you pick first in this next one anyway. It's all Yon Maker and the Creeds versus Jinder and the Curry Connection. The fucking oh, there you are. It was the microphone again. It took oh, okay. over for a second. I think Indershire wins this. I think this is an opportunity to allow uh, Braun, allow Yon to take an L and not lose his championship. Plus, we might get some fucking mellow fuck shit. He's not on the card. Mello might come out, stand on the on the uh, catwalk there. Yeah. It might be enough to distract him, or maybe Mello comes out, uh, pulls pulls uh, Jan away, allowing the numbers game to get the Creed brothers, and Indershire gets that dub. 
I, th- I think Andrew Shearer's going to win. Yeah, they are really going out of their way to make sure Curry Connection builds all kinds of momentum until they lose at the fucking stand and deliver against the Creeds. But uh, Cesar, we got a six man tag: Yan in the Creeds versus Gender in the Curries. I can't pick against Yan, man. It's it's just not wow, it's just not feasible. Him and Mello are not going to lose until stand and deliver, and then one of them is going to lose. Okay, so Cesar picks Yan in the Creed. Okay. All right, Yan. Yawn is gonna get the pin. He's either he's gonna pin gender too. This he's is gonna pin gender just like he did last week. It's gonna be a, he, he's not gonna pin any of the curry connection guys because they don't want them to look weak. Yawn's gonna spear gender and pin him in the middle of that ring. The first line that Stick said was my reasoning. I thousand percent agree. This is a chance to get Yawn an L. Finally, he can lose because nothing's on the line. This is gonna. This will be the shittiest match of the shittiest guaranteed fucking match of the night. Will be this six man tag. Uh, Jan definitely needs to deep throat an L, and I think this is the perfect opportunity. Opportunity to do it. So, um, I agree with you, sticks. Uh, gender and the Curry Connection will win, but man, are they gonna lose hard at Stand and Deliver? Now we got the main event, I guess. Uh, the NXT Women's Championship is on the line when champ Roxanne Perez takes on the final boss. Um, this, uh, of course, Rox, Roxy just got the title. Uh, she, I like the story building to this. They, they don't, they're not making Mako seem like this uh, asshole veteran that's shitting all over her. She's like, it's like mutual respect between these two. And what, I mean, how can you get more respect than having a clean match against the final boss and defeating the final boss sportsmanship handshake at the end. And then before show goes off the air, here comes Roxy's next challenger. Uh, This is also going to be my caveat match uh, sticks. Uh, I got a, I got a theory, but I'm not going to say it yet. Uh, I say Roxy retains Roxy does retain uh, in this championship match. Cesar Roxy Mako. NXT Women's Championship. It's it's, it's Roxy, man. She's not going to lose. Uh, Sticks. Yeah, I I can't. It's it's still way. Too, I mean, it's still early. I mean, there's no way that you can have her. I mean, as much as we like Mako and she's she could be a legitimate champion, it's it's still just too early in a title reign for her to do it. Roxy hasn't done anything. Mm-hmm. To make it so that sh- they should take it off her yeah, yet. So this, this literally legitimizes Roxy. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the stamp that of that she's a legit champion. So yeah, I, like, I like got she, she won a she won a triple threat against two people who are supposed to be friends. She beats the final boss. This legit stamps her reign going forward. Uh caveat time, gentlemen. I'll just get mine out of the way really quick. Uh, it's that main event. I, I think it's the main event. Uh, I think that Cora J will come out with Malik's blade and fuck with Roxy. Um, yeah, I say from the, the entrances to the end of the match. So I got that much time for old Cora Jade to pull some fuck shit. With so me. she interferes in the match? She it From, from entrance to the end of the, the show, if Cora Jade comes out, you're just saying she comes out and fucks with her. You get the whole match. The I I, I said from bell to, from entrances to exit. I, that's been the rule the whole time. That's well, not she, been the rule the whole time. So you say there's a distraction. No, 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 no. That's not been the rule the whole time because you said it I said a couple not. weeks ago. I said this doesn't matter. It's not even that serious. From the, I said from the entrances to the end of the segment. I said you can go back and find me saying that. You always, you always change the rules. How did they change the rule? This has been the rule the whole time. No, one time you said if they interfere with the match, it has to be during the match, and the entrances don't count. That one time you said but that. Then I. Oh, so now you change the rule. Like from I said, the you entrance. The no, you, you can go rule. back. You can go back and find me saying it. From entrances to the end of the segment, mm-hmm. I've said that before. Those words have come out of my mouth because this isn't for money. Okay. This is just us waiting to hear what sticks assigns us. Sure, sure. So Cora Jade comes out, 
fucks with Roxy. What does fucks with Roxy in, uh, mean? Use your imagination. Cesar, what no, is... No, 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 because if she just comes out and does nothing, that's literally nothing. That's a distraction. That's what's called a distraction, Cesar. No, that's not a distraction. She just that's comes not out. a distraction. Your arch nemesis comes out. That doesn't distract you. Not her arch nemesis. Well, she, she, hasn't, she hasn't been on TV for for a while. Well, I mean, like a while. exactly why yeah, I'm choosing it. I mean, she, it's been a hot minute since she's okay. been on TV. So. And she was eliminated first in that uh, battle royal, if you remember. Yeah. Well, she's so, eliminated like numerous times. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Facts. All right, Cesar. Your caveat, you big. Nah, I don't. I don't really have one yet. I'm thinking of one. Sticks. Well, gentlemen, I know we had talked about one match in particular, Joe Gacy and Chase U, and the obvious one is obviously Duke Hudson. But did we? Did you guys listen to that promo that Jism cut? They had said that. Thea Hale knows. She knows. So, while everybody's looking at Duke Hudson, you know, he's, I don't believe in Andre Chase, the universe, all that stuff. My caveat is Thea Hale wow. will cost Andre Chase the win against Joe Gacy. I like it. Thea Hale. Costs or turns? Costs? Cost them the match. Oh, yeah, which one? Well, which one would turn yeah, after it would, to go? It would technically be, be both. the turning point of her going to, to Jizzup, so. Yeah. And it's only during the match, okay? Okay, Cesar. No, I was kidding. <laughs> yeah, see, see, see how he would say that? He would say that. Cesar, Cesar, uh, uh, it's going to bite me in the ass. She's going to end up doing something. That's a good, that's a good caveat. I didn't even think of that shit. That's a good one. Uh, Cesar? Yeah, I'm just going to go with the one I called last week. Sean is going to come out there. He's going to talk to Grayson. Oh, yeah. Grayson's going to try to get him in a match. And I'm going to say that okay. New Japan cracker that they signed, Sean Michaels going to call him to fight Grayson Waller. It's probably going to be fuckery, and Sean's going to be like, I got a guy for you, and not say it. And then it's going to end up being him at Stand and Deliver, which will really piss me off. But I want to say, like, if they want to get a good pop for a debut, Sean brings this guy out and says he will fight Grayson on his behalf at Stand and Deliver. So, uh, Dragon Lee, right? Yeah, Dragon Lee. Uh, HBK says... I mean, the ultimate play would be, since since Waller has been fucking with him on TV, he's yeah. going to be like, oh, so I know you're going to keep fucking with him. With the NXT programming, mm-hmm. yeah, you're not gonna find out till Stay and Deliver the day the day of Stay and Deliver. Oh, that, yeah, that's what I figured. Like, I, I was like, this is what he's gonna do. But if you want to debut a guy, you want to you should debut him on like Grayson Waller's show. He comes out there, maybe kicks him in the fucking head, which gives Grayson a reason to be like, oh no, fuck this bitch. He ain't gonna disrespect me on my show while I'm on NXT TV and blah blah blah. So you're saying Dragon Lee. Uh, HBK says Dragon Lee will face you at Stand and Deliver or Dragon Yeah, like like some shit you. like Grayson's like, like yeah, no, Grayson's gonna say like, yo, fight me at Stand and Deliver like you fear. Like, fight me at Stand and Deliver. You wanna put me down? Fight me at Stand and Deliver. He goes, like, give me a match at Stand and Deliver something like that against you. And HBK's like, sure, I'll give you a match. I'll give you a match at Stand and Deliver. But here's my representative because I gotta be in the back hosting the show. And then like he calls Dragon Lee out and Dragon Lee comes out there doesn't function i i i there is i if this would have been uh a month from now i think it would have been possible for uh jay white but it's a tv thing so i think he would make a massive announcement like that at a premium live event rather than a tv TV that you do this is obviously the raw after wrestlemania that's Uh the only time you do something like this on tv yeah like jay white you would do something like raw yeah that's true yeah uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, sticks, get ready. And now it's time for Stixie Drip Trips Drip Pack of the Week. Ooh. 
We own the night, not trying to get a copyright violation here now. Well, we getting sticks is trip backed of the week. A, of a former Bullet Club leader, we had a tag team championship match on Impact. We started off the show with the ABC, the Ace and Bay Connection, talking about their history there in Vegas. Motor City Machine Guns, they come out. Well, they have some history, too, there in Vegas. So instead of making a match at Sacrifice, the next, uh, not pay review, but Impact Plus premium live event, Motor City Machine Guns go ahead and say, hey, how about we just go ahead and do this match tonight? So my drip-packed moment of the night was that match. Motor City Machine Guns. Versus the ABC, Ace and Bay Connection. And the ABC pulled out the win. We have new Impact Tag Team Champions. And a match that was really good. Ace and Bay going over the New Japan. And the Junior junior Heavyweight Champion Tag Team uh, Tournament, they gelled. They found their teamwork. Made it all the way to the finals, to the final match. Lost but came back as a legit tag team. And coming off coming off of a win, coming off as a coming off of a triple threat where they had Kenta at at the last Impact Plus, they picked up that dub and we have new Impact Tag Team Champions. The a ABC, the Ace and Bay Connection are your new Impact Tag Team Champions. And I had a couple uh notes here as well sticks um if you legit know let me know if you don't it's fine is Gis giselle shaw a tranny is is yeah. that actual oh it's a tranny she, she is legit it's a, a tranny, tranny. okay and and i believe her <clears throat> not are legit dating too who the guy who runs impact of the guy who got taken oh, out that guy yeah, yeah. Damn. yeah if, you go, if you were to go, I think on either his or her or his or his her uh, Twitter or Instagram, there's a there's a picture from Christmas on Christmas Day with with those two, and I believe with uh, Josh and his, Josh Alexander and his wife and their their kid. But yeah, I think yeah, she is he she is a is a tranny. So yes. I, I yeah, that voice is not a woman's voice. Um also <laughs> props to Dirty Dango. He is fucking funny. Uh he was funny with old uh Santino uh, uh this past week and, and bully ray uh slapping that Durka. My god, the disrespect. Uh but yeah, impact is always entertaining. It's more entertaining than what we're about to talk about, but before then. I got to take a leak. So we'll be right back. It's Wednesday night. And you know what that means? Some shit. That's right. Bob the All Atlantic Bob Championship Bob. is on the line with a uh, Orange Cassidy versus Big Bill. But at least Stokes was out there. Uh, Orange Cassidy playing mind games with Bill, making him chase him, messing with Stokes and his glasses. Talk about a polar opposite match from last week when Orange Cassidy <laughs> took on, um, I forgot. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that Orange Cassidy keeps defending this title. Uh, this is a slower paced, big guy dominating little, oh, Wheeler Yuta. He fought Wheeler Yuta last week. Yeah. Um, this is a slower paced, big guy dominating little guy match. Bill even puts Orange Cassidy through the table. Uh, Dan Housen out to support Orange Cassidy. Uh, oh, Bill dude. Bill with his own hurt lock. He could have won if he would have kept it on. He tries a big boot, but Orange Cassidy evades. Dan Housen cannot curse anyone. Stokes clocks him with the cast. Orange Cassidy retains with top rope orange punch in this garbage match. Not a fan. Sticks. We kicking this shit off with some uh, steaming plate of who gives a fuck. Uh, what'd you think? Yeah. I mean, there's another match to add to Orange's fucking Mid Atlantic fucking championship reign. Yeah, mid exactly. Yeah, Ex yeah. Uh, 
you got Stoke out there, so that was good. Uh, Dan Housen out there, didn't get a chance to curse anybody, got fucking cast slapped by fucking uh, by a Stoke. Yeah, I mean, Orange had to go the top rope to fucking hit that Orange punch to fucking beat it. Big Bill. I mean, congratulations to Big Bill to get on TBS television for a for a match. But I mean, this is like a bitch. This shit main event dark elevation. This is where it should have been. So typical fucking typical ATW opening match. Cesar, did I'm you actually did yeah, you actually I'm, sit I'm through? Shit, I'm watching the Philly game. No, yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. I can no, just man. I mean, it is one minute left, and Philly's only down one. Uh, but no, nah, this is some bullshit. N- nigga, nigga, there was a part in the match later in the match. Nah, well, nah, this whole this whole fucking episode, you might as well call Hill Caesar. No, nah, fuck this bullshit. There was a part in the fucking match. The nigga threw a nigga through a table with a choke slam. Right, and that was on the ramp. Who moved it to the ramp? I don't even know who moved it to the ramp. If they moved it to the ramp, wasn't paying fucking attention. Don't give a oh, shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't even give a shit. He choke slammed this nigga through the through the ramp, and then later in the match, where uh, where Orange was beating up Big Bill near the stairs, the drop kicked his face into the stairs. The ref was counting. Yeah, he threw him to a table on the outside that was outside for 20 fucking seconds. You won't count them shit. You would have counted them niggas out. But all of a sudden, he 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 drop kick a nigga into the fucking steps and you want to start counting. Whoa. Two. Three. That's dumbass bullshit. Fuck this old bullshit. Yeah, this shit was mid. Uh, Big Bill ain't nothing but a taller murder hawk. Taller Brian Cage. Taller piece of shit. Fucking Tony. Tony's sucking on Orange's dick. Okay, orange, orange. You know what? You know what? Orange is, is uh twenty two matches undefeated, according to last year. He's undefeated this year. His last twenty two matches, he's won. I guess since he's hold that fucking title, this is the new workhorse title. Because fat ass Samoa Joe ain't ain't wrestling for the TNT title every goddamn week. Like he a white boy cracker Darby Allen. Uh, this match was dumb as shit. And now Man Green is gonna talk, and I'm gonna go back to watching this Philly game because it's uh only got less than a minute. Hold on, Cesar. Oh, yeah. Okay, go go for it. I'll just tell I'll tell the yeah, listeners. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, man. Green, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sticks. So I forgot to mention, I think it was a stage hand or something that um Big Bill or Stokes had. Billy is up hand. by five and there's 25 seconds left. They were down by one when I started that fucking riot. This game is crazy. Some I dude in a hoodie. He I got some dude up. in a hoodie that carries a table, but then Big Bill pushed him away or something, and then they set the table well, up on a ramp. That was oh, a common oh, theme throughout this episode. It's a commercial on back. Wait, there's a nigga in the People come in and help out during the fucking matches. I mean, you had that. You had the fucking refs in the ladder match that we'll talk about later. Oh, my we God. Oh, yeah, we wait, wait that. for that. Wait for wait, that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's a commercial. There was a nigga in the hoodie? Okay, uh, Stokes got a, a stagehand and a hoodie to help him carry the table to the ramp. And then Big Bill pushed the dude in the hoodie away, and they set up the table on the ramp. This dude didn't even look like a stagehand. He looked like a fan from the crowd wearing a normal, well, well like a purple hoodie or something. It was a Make-A-Wish person. They got they granted his wish. Special Tony. Olympics was in the front row. Tony, Tony, wow. Tony, wow. <laughs> Tony is wild. He got a fan to set up a table, nigga. You broke, like bitch. You ain't making no money off this shit, company. You fuck. You got to have fans. Set up tables, you broke bitch. <laughs> up next, the post match promo from last week's bloody John Moxley. He getting Somebody blood gets all over the staircase. He a bleed. Somebody clean that up. Somebody got clean up your shit. fucking hepatitis H ass blood. Uh, the elite know. try to have entrance, a black magic crack a shit attack. Samoa Joe, the king of television, joins commentary. It's time for the face of the revolution ladder match. Oh my God! Okay, uh, <laughs> we have talk your talk, <laughs> Mangria. Talk your Sammy talk, Sangria. <laughs> versus Andretti versus Ar Fox versus your mother Eddie Kingston versus Ortiz versus Commander versus Takesta versus P2H. Yes, folks, the Sonic Ring returns. It's P2H's hometown. He got the fans behind him. 
Don Callis beaten off watching uh, Takesha backstage. Commander walks the top rope and leaps onto all the guys waiting to catch him on the outside. Yep. Commander just leaping all over the place on this. And Dratty possibly murders Sammy with a falcon arrow on a setup ladder. The back of Sammy's head. Wow, that looked really bad. Uh. Danny Garcia comes out to help Sammy. Sammy, not to be outdone, pulls a Jeff Hardy ladder spot onto Andretti on the outside. Takesha about to grab ring, but P2H collides with the ladder, bending it. Instead of getting another ladder, which the ring was surrounded by, he gets that ladder and a spot I've never seen before. Three refs hold the ladder down so P2H can grab the ring and win. Behind me are the letters A-T-W, which Cesar coined many, many, well, two years ago. It's all trash wrestling. This was a perfect example of some horrific shit that could have been solved so easily. By the way, the fact that Sammy's alive that dude's got, he's a cat. That fool got nine lives because he just spent two of them hitting the back of his head on the fucking ladder. Thanks to uh, the next big thing, Andretti. Who? Who? Um, Wardlow comes out stealing all of P2H's shine because Black History Month was over. This was the first. This was March 1st, yep. Power bomb students oh, security off the stage onto waiting. He power bombed the black guy. He power bombed the black security guy. Yeah, he did beat up. Just that was a direct order from Tony Skeets. That was that racist fuck. Uh, best friends not medically cleared for casino tag battle royal. So Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy will replace them because it's not like they have an entire locker room full of talent sentenced to dark. They got to get Orange Cassidy's crack of ass back out there. He's got he's got a huge ass. Oh, fucking, and, and on the pay-per-view. And cooler on the pay-per-view. ice fucking chest on his shoulder because he's hurt from all retarded big bills. And his ribs taped up. And Dan Housen, they had a whole locker room full of people. Yet another decision by the best booker in the world. How many years, Sticks? Three years Christ. in a row. Christ. They have a locker room full of unused people. <sighs> nah, man. Nah, the mother niggas uh, need Sean. Cesar, thoughts? I don't on... wait, wait. Go, go to Sticks first. I got nine seconds. Sticks, your thoughts on this atrocity of a ladder match? Well, first, when they made this, you know, AEW botches and uh, I think Ken Oliver on Twitter. Knew that they were gonna get a fucking year's worth of fucking material, and guess what? They damn sure did. Between fucking the Falcon Arrow, and then even on that fucking pounce attempt with fucking P two H. I mean, to take a shit as leg was still trapped in that fucking ladder. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't blow out a fucking ACL in that. I mean, Sammy's lucky to be alive, and then on top of that. Him and f- then Danny Garcia comes out. They set up a ladder outside the ring, throw fucking Andretti on uh, Mario Marahu on the fucking ladder, and he does a fucking was it a swanton off of a taller ass ladder, the actual legit ladder you should have had in the ring to get the fucking to get Sonic's fucking golden ring. You had that set up outside the ring to do a swanton. On the fucking action and dready outside the ring. I mean, this fucking, this would, you want to talk about a fucking time filler, but also a fucking match that shouldn't, that you really didn't need to fucking have, but you decided to have anyway and throw a bunch of fucking people in. I mean, cluster fucking mind. This fucking was a fucking shit show of a match. And then, yeah, had P2H afterwards talking shit. Wardlow coming out. Samoa Joe couldn't get his fucking headset off. He's trying to get that fucking thing off. Fucking cord. He's fucking getting his ass whooped by the fucking cord. 
Skibone couldn't help the poor guy out by just fucking yanking Help him, Skibone. Guy. Help him, Tony. He tried to get away. Fuck. I mean, Man. this whole match, start to finish, was fucking horrible. And then on top of that, you had PGH. Win. He's sitting at the fucking bottom of the ramp just in a chair like, yeah, you guys go ahead and fucking talk your shit and your bullshit. I'm just going to sit here. I'm writing this down in the book of Hobbs for that way I can have it in the next promo next week. How you're holding me down in my own city. You're fucking with me. Wardlow beating up all the fucking black security guys, power bombing one off onto the crowd. I mean, this fucking, this is, this is Tony Skeet's exclusive fuck shit. Wardlow That's all actually I, pushed a white security guard out of the way to get to the, the black power guy. bomb to the to power bomb the nigga. <laughs> Cesar, please, sir, go off on this horrific yeah, this match is, yeah, this shit, of garbage. Yeah, that, the game's pretty much over. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me let me get my beer game ready. Hold on. Let me get a sip. And this got three hundred thousand more view- viewers than the A show. What the fuck? Look here. Look here. Look, hold on, hold on. I'm about to bring y'all in. Look here. Oh, Look he's here. showing I gotta, his dick. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta bring you Nick. Yeah. You almost made me grab my camera off top of this goddamn computer, you motherfuckers. Okay. Look. Look at this bullshit. This match was such utter shit. Okay. All right. It's a ladder match for the Sonic Brass Ring. The match is such utter shit, you can't even choose a champion you want to fight for anymore. You only get the TNT title. Which this whole pay-per-view is called Wash, Rinse, and Repeat. I think the only motherfuckers fighting for the first time are Daniel Bryan and MJF. Okay? Everybody else is a fucking wash, rinse, repeat. The ending of this shitty-ass match pretty much was the three-way of how Wardlow won the title anyway. With Hobbs. Samoa Joe and Wardlow. So even the ending of this bullshit match is a wash, rinse, repeat. And how many ladder matches are you gonna almost kill Sammy Guevara in? Huh? Huh? This nigga, this nigga, this nigga action who I don't know who this fuck boy is. Action who he wanted to try to hit a falcon arrow. Sammy's leg is tied in the ring, is the head on the back of a ladder. This nigga eats nothing but ladder. A uh, commander jumps off the top rope onto AR Fox on a ladder with the on a ladder this way while a ladder's that way. And what does a ladder do? Hold still. Nigga, who's buying real ladders to get hit through? No, that shit should have broke so that shit didn't hurt so hard. These that motherfucker bounced. He bounced like a check in the hood paying for child support, nigga. That shit bounced. All the way the fuck out of here. All the way the fuck out of here. Like some Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, bottom of the ninth, fucking two outs. Roided. Yeah, roided up all the way the fuck out of here. All the way the fuck out of here. Eddie Kingston and Ortiz weren't even in the match for nothing but five fucking minutes. And they was in the back. The match was so shitty, Eddie Kingston quit AEW Big after up. the match. <laughs> Big ups. Big Eddie. ups. Big, uh, I'm gonna get one of them Carpe D's nut shirts for real. My nigga said, "I'm gonna fight this dude to the back and watch the rest of the match." And literally said, "Hey you, hey you, fine oh, bitch." They, no, they said they said it took ten security staff to pull them apart and keep them in the back. Well, it must not have been the same niggas pulling Wardlow off that nigga security guard at the end of the match. No, nah, wasn't that. I mean, I forgot to take a shit that was in this match until he knocked a cracker off the top. I think he knocked Sammy off. Yeah, D- Danny Garcia came off, and all of a sudden, Sammy wanted to get the tall ladder. He wanted to climb to the top and do the... Yeah, all right, all right. You know, in 20 years, when I see your bitch ass on Quaaludes driving from fucking Florida back to North Carolina, where the fuck you live with, Tay County, talking about... I'm going to Florida because you high as shit driving just like Jeff Hardy's high ass. See you at the mental institution, nigga. You want to be just like Jeff Hardy? Get on them Quaaludes, player. Keep doing these dumb ass ladder match spots for no fucking reason besides story and plot. And then you give, and then, yeah. And you know what? You know what? We all know wherever AEW goes, we need to check the fucking list, see who lives there. 
Because them niggas don't lose in their home. It's reverse WWE. Them niggas don't lose in their hometown. They always win. Book of Hobbs. Hobbs gonna win that bullshit. Yeah, fucking even, even on the Falcon Arrow Sammy shit, two reps in the ring holding the ladder. They was holding the ladder. Three. Vince? Three. Like three. Vince would never, would never have refs get caught refs in the ring. Oh, please, please don't die, Mr. Wrestling Man. Otherwise, I have no reason to have a job. And then, and even, and don't, you know, you know, you know who else I saw? You know who else I saw? They said Samoa Joe's meeting him on commentary. What do they do? Start filming the desk. And I see some redheaded Becky bitch trying to pull a damn seat out of the back for Jamoa, for Samoa Joe to sit on with the heads. I'm like, why are you showing they this? Had, they, had to get their, they had to get the DraftKings promo in. That's what they had Gotta to get do. The draft you. But still, why are you showing this bitch pulling the seat out of the back? She was literally wheeling it out. She had a headset on. The, the bitch, you should have had the chair out there five minutes ago. You knew Samoa Ho was coming out. You had a fucking whole ass commercial to have a headset in the seat. But you want to wait until they want to talk about draft rooms. Play for free. How many pit balls in Daniel Bryan? Well, who gives a shit? Nobody gives a fuck about that bullshit ass match. This long ass fucking bullshit ass pay-per-view. You got niggas dying in the ring. And uh, they they just got married, cheating on their fat wife with their hot Latin wife, and then these niggas dying in the ring, and then trying to get on Quaaludes like Jeff Hardy, jumping off the goddamn top and shit. Well, I mean, what's the point? What's the point? That nigga jumping off the top, putting this dumb nigga through the damn ladder. At least that shit broke. And the commander walking across ladders, walking across tables. I don't even know who this nigga is. They said it was his first match. How this nigga get the face of the revolution? This face of the revolution, huh? My first match. Can I get a contract next year? Face the revolution. My fat ass come out there. I'll shoot all six niggas and then climb the ladder and get the damn gold ring. And then I'm going to shoot some old Joe's fat ass and win the goddamn title. And I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, no DQ with my title on the line. Shoot every fucking body that gets in the fucking ring. I'm going to shoot the nigga in the back. Let him bleed out like John Moxley, crawling his fat ass all the way out to the ring, hit his ass, and I'm going to be the longest reigning champ of all goddamn time. <laughs> We will legit have a legit street champion. Damn right. I'm going to shoot every fucking body. Yo, this match was dumber than dog shit. I don't even know why the fuck you had it. I'm glad you had it today. Because if I saw this shit on pay-per-view, I saw this shit on pay-per-view, I'd have driven to Florida and shot Tony Khan's ass. This nigga coked out. Fuck this nigga. I hope he put some fentanyl in his next batch of coke. And I hope this nigga die. And I ain't taking that back. I ain't taking it Other than that. that. And Mangri and myself no thoughts on the subject. Mangri and myself would have paid fifty bucks to watch that. That shit wasn't wouldn't have happened on Wednesday. I'd have paid fifty bucks for somebody to shoot his ass. L- let me ask you guys: Was this worse than uh, the casino? Uh, no, what was it? the double or nothing ladder match where MJF came out in a fucking devil mask and won? Was this, this was worse? No, this was definitely worse. The worst? Okay. This was definitely, this was definitely way worse. worse. Okay. I saw there's better three, people. There's better three people three in that match. He didn't have three reps holding the fucking ladder, so that way MGF could climb up it. Yeah, that's true. Up You're next, right. it's Jericho versus Pretty Peter Avalon. No entrance. Who cares? Shouldn't this be on Dark Elevation? Uh, Jericho hits Codebreaker for the win. Even worse, we had to look at Tranny Manson. Uh, Jericho beats Peter with a bat. At least we got to see absolute risk. Stocks for the save, but then the JAS jump him. I guess um Danny's new signature is the rock bottom because he did it. Mm-hmm. I think in the ladder match and in this, he's doing yes, the rock he bottom. Yeah, he hit it twice. Yep. Uh Hangman's response video audio was really bad during it. I don't know if you guys noticed. So it. Vince would never. It, Vince it was, would never. It was season one of Dynamite Bad. No, nah, nigga, that uh, nigga was <laughs> that shit was recorded on a fucking iPhone eight. Out in the fucking windiest part of town, fucking clamshell, clamshell clam phone from the. Don't fucking, get me started, man. Don't get me started on that bullshit. Uh, Renee brings out the captain, Christian Cage, out to the ring. Uh, Christian shits on San Francisco and will pre- re- prevent Jungle Jack from winning a singles championship. Points out Jack's hesitation to follow through with the concerto. Christian hates this video game generation. Tells him, like, his no-talent hack of a dad, oh, video package plays, of Jungle Jack digging Christian's grave 
and all the history between them. He sheds a tear. I like that better than any of Jungle Jack's promos. He needs to just do videos. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, decent enough. Um, Cesar Jericho versus Pretty Peter Avalon. And then our boy getting jumped. And then Christian, the captain, speaking his mind. But Jungle Jack with the video. Just because your whole ass run out at an open challenge and you get Judas effect by Jericho. And then and then, then this is what you do. This is what you do. You have pretty Peter Avalon fight for four minutes and 50 seconds. Like he's whooping Jericho's monkey ass and Jericho can't do nothing. And one Judas effect, your ass folds. Folds like a lawn seat, nigga. You it fold her like a lawn seat at the end of a concert and Jericho gets the pin. Why is this bullshit on my TV? Why is it on my TV? And yeah, the only saving grace is you get the bat and Ricky Stocks. Ricky Stocks comes out for the save and he said, oh, the JAS ain't going to be there Sunday. But you ain't say nothing about tonight. Nigga, get Vince's dick out your mouth. I swear to God, if this is not a w- old school WWE scripted segment, I don't know what the fuck is, nigga. But I guess you're an entertainer. So, you know, this is what you do. You're just going to suck on Vince's dick and do Vince shit and hate on him for it. And then they beat him down. So we know that Jericho ain't winning. All right. You might as well just take that shit off the prediction. We know Jericho. AEW is the rebellious team to WWE. And it sucks. Yeah. Uh, Uh, The the captain. The captain. Oh, yeah. Of course. The captain. He come out there in his nice ass suit, you know. Blessing that shit crowd, you know, telling them what time it is. Even the subtle nuances and even Renee acting to it. Like yeah. Renee had the microphone and Captain kept pulling it up when he stood up. And, and she, Renee's like, She rolls her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. She rolls her eyes every time yep, and he yep. keeps pulling it up. Oh, oh. It's, like, it's like they talk about Randy Orton. It's the little things. It's the little things. The little things. The little things. Oh my God. Captain, Captain was out there preaching. I thought it was Sunday. No, it was Wednesday. Motherfucking captain. Get, give it, no, give this, it. Was, this was a Wednesday congregation. This is church. This is the uh, Wednesday night church. church. It was it was Bible study. It was Wednesday night church. Captain was out there showing y'all how to do it, how to cut a promo, how to be a heel. This was how the best heal. part of the whole fucking show, by the way. Yeah. How how to even piss off the announcer who's a face. By doing the little things, because he kept doing it over and over and over. Oh, oh, Captain, show these crackers the way. I don't know why you went there. You can wrestle again. Come back with Edge. Fight fucking uh, whatever them crackers Judgment is. Day. Judgment Day. Judgment Day. Oh, you and Edge. WrestleMania. Finn and Priest. Dom on the outside. Come on, Captain. Give me one more ENC. Five second pose, nigga. One time for you retire. Just come back. Look, look. Vince is gone, baby. He gone. Trips got the trips got the hell. You you in good hands with trips. He know what to do. He got you. Just you know, finish out his little contract. Come on, come on back home. Come on back home. Come on back home one time. Come on back home. I mean, go, you know, go to go to NXT fight mellow for me personally. But come on back home. Come on back home. Come on, Damn, bring back it. bring back that theme too. Uh oh, sticks. We got but, no, no, but 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 yeah uh fucking jungle boy dug that whole shit. Oh yeah, yeah. And I just checked on Wikipedia. I don't know if you've looked Mangria yet. No, what happened? It is called a final burial. Oh match. yeah, yeah, you're right. Yep. That's yeah, final burial match. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> what I didn't know. I mean, I didn't watch Rampage. I watched the first like 20 minutes of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sticks. Did was there any mention of that on Rampage? Oh fuck, I don't remember. I was I started drinking when Rampage started, so fuck, I've been like I, 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 I started Rampage. I started Rampage at like eight thirty, and I was watching it, and I was like, "Why is this a final burial match? Is there, are they going to announce this on Rampage?" But I didn't finish, so I watched the first thirty seconds of Rampage, and then me and my wife left. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, it was it was okay. Top Flight versus. Kitty Fondler Club, Daniel, Daniel Bryan, and uh 
John Ho, and it was actually a pretty good match. Like, I like were... I like Top Flight's entrance song. That song's yeah. badass. That song's badass. Yeah. Uh, Sticks, your thoughts on Jericho, Pretty Peter Avalon, and then the captain schooling the locker room on how to do it. The only saving grace of this was Ricky Starks. I mean, for for God's sakes. Jericho got taken behind the woodshed, for, like Cesar said, for like four minutes and 50 seconds. Hits the Hail Mary Judas effect and pulls out the dub. I mean, for Christ's sakes, Jericho. I mean, this is, if we're not going down that path of, of WCW when you had Nash and Hall and Hogan calling their own numbers on this shit. I mean, if that match doesn't show you, I mean, what does? I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty Peter Avalon. So, I mean, you, sh- you should have been dominated throughout that whole match and have to go to that Hail Mary Judas <laughs> effect. You did. I mean, you uh, did you get – was your whole point of putting Avalon over? Okay, congratulations. Now he'll go back to dark, dark elevation, and we won't see him – to a next open challenge match where he gets fucking murked from behind and gets left lifeless on the ramp. He'll get tapped mm-hmm. out by Hook. Yeah, real that quick. Too. Real quick. Yeah, super quick. Before you can even fucking finish the line of what that move is, the red rum, and he's, he's already tapping. So, <laughs> I mean, <coughs> Hook with the red. Oh, he's tapped. Oh, he tapped. Well, he tapped before he put it on. <laughs> I swear to you, I've seen it twice. He's tapped us. He tapped as soon as Hook made it out of the ramp. He's like, "Fuck this!" Uh, he so he just tied his boots. He he's tapping his boots. He tapped out. <laughs> but I mean, this was Ricky Starks coming out here. We all three of us. He is a tri. He is a, a tripod man. I mean, he's got our stamp. So God, I, wish, was, I wish he had a cameo. Damn it! <laughs> oh, <laughs> You could you would run you could run that shit five years straight. That would you as soon as he as soon as that would be I mean that would be the savior, and this was a saving grace. He was a saving grace of the segment. So I mean, hey Ricky, can you just say the tripod and then do your pose for ten minutes? That's oh. it. That is it. The tripod. Yeah, and then that's it. Hundred dollars. Goddamn right. And Christian Cage. This man is doing the Lord's work. He's showing you how to do it on the mic, and he's making Jungle Boy relevant. He's keeping him relevant. He's I making mean, him re-relevant. No, it's re-relevant because that oh, crap was dead and gone. And he also made the the he also helping Jungle Boy out, making his mom and his sister relevant when they're in the crowd. I mean, this man is doing the Lord's work. And this guy is doing it while also not going for a championship. He's just out here doing something. He's just doing a Sunday regular, just skipping through a park. Okay, yeah, it's Jungle Boy. Yeah, hey Renee, no, no, Mike up here. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta get my promo out there. Christian Cage, Captain, our Captain. God bless you, man. I mean, God bless you. You are the greatest thing that AEW has. And you also did this shit while you were injured. You came up slinged up and still cutting fucking promos, doing TV time. Whatever they're paying you, they should double it. That's all I got on that. 1,000%. Matt Hardy with Isaiah and Stokes. Oh, ego versus Hook. I think I finally saw a crack in the armor of Hook. Uh, it kind of looked like during this match he didn't know how to sell, which is fine. I just noticed uh, is all. Um, Hook almost lost after getting clobbered by Stokes's cast. Lightning quick tap out, Peter Avalon wise, when Hook locked in the red worm, but it was obvious Matt did that on purpose. Uh, Stokes must face Hook in a no DQ. Firm ban from ringside match now. We then get a Black Magic crack a shit promo. Don't care. 
Uh, Booty Storm versus uh, with Soraya versus Riho. Riho wins. Uh, Sticks, what did you think of Matt Hardy versus Hook? And then you don't have to talk about Black Magic Cracker shit. Uh, Booty Storm versus Riho. It's nice that Matt Hardy's still getting TV checks. It's great that he's still, still he can still actually wrestle after all the shit that him and Jeff has done. I mean, we're this if there's not a like a retirement run that Matt Hardy this is this has got to be part of it. I mean, if this guy's still going to be wrestling in AEW two years from now, it'll be a miracle. But I mean, it's good that he got a match with Hook. You can get a little bit of he can, you know, give Hook a little bit of a run with a vet and a ring. But like you said, it was quick to tap. And we knew we this is setting up the uh the the story for him to go against. I mean, if him and Ethan Page don't end up wrestling each other sometime down the road, it'll be amazing that they don't. But I mean, Ethan Page selling shit outside the ring, the the, and then the delete the parties calling for it in the ring. Paige, my boy's out there selling it outside the ring. But I mean, it was, it was, it was all right. I mean, Hook got a, his, he's got his first match back from suspension. He got a dub. Now he's got to face Stokely. I did fail to mention I saw Stokely's Instagram or Twitter, one of them, where they did a post match uh, interview. And Stokes was looking all scared. And I don't know if it was on Rampage or what, but uh, they interviewed him. And uh, everyone was putting their arm around Stokes like, it's okay, man. It's going to be okay. And Isaiah came up to him and goes, look, Stokes, it's not that bad, all right? You're going to make it. be okay. And then he goes, ah! (laughs) (laughs) But everyone's so used to it now. That he just he just hugged them and like nobody really made a big deal. But every time Isaiah does that, fucking pops me. But uh, yeah, and then uh, we had we had Riho and Tony Storm. I mean, Rio still out here on TV. Rio got a dub. We got to see Booty Storm. This nigga said Riho out here on TV. There's a reason why I only have two lines for this match, by the way. Oh, I mean, she's still out here on TV. I mean, she goes away. And then as soon as she steps foot on U- United States soil, she's getting booked on fucking Dinah Trash and on Rampage. And then she's collecting dubs against Booty Star. I mean, we got to see Booty. I mean, we saw psoriasis. Outside the ring. Hell, we even got the killer in the pillar. Which I don't know why I said that because they're not even a fuck. They're not tag team wrestling. But I mean, we got the doctor. Britt Baker. D M D. And we got Hada out there. But I mean, Rio got a dub. All right. Cool. And time was officially killed. Cesar, uh, Matt yeah. Hardy versus Hook, and then Booty Storm versus Riho. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're saying, man, Green, about Hook not selling and shit. I think it was another match he wasn't selling too good. Kraken needs to work on the selling, you know, because he's just been, like, spiking the crackers in the ring and choking them out. He needs to work on the selling game a little bit. But, you know, Hook's still fresh, man. He's still fresh. You know what got I'm saying? Green, you know, got a little green on him. He's still green, man. He's green, he greener than baby shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, let that man marinate. You know what I'm saying? Do some work. Do some dirt. Hey, we've seen worse. Yeah, well, it's ATW. We've seen worse with people who've had years on them. So, like that fucking bullshit ladder match. Anyway, I digress. Um, Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's out there with Matt Hardy, a little whatever. Uh, you know, Isaiah Cassidy humping it on the ring. I don't know if y'all saw that. But yeah, a little backstage as he gets, oh, you know what I'm saying? He 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 doing he doing the Lord's work. He trying to bring entertainment to this bullshit show that don't care about niggas. You know what I'm saying? If he was he got, if a, t-shirt. Him, he got a t-shirt for this shit, so hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
if, if him and his pack partner was on fucking in a fucking NXT, them niggas would have been tag team champs in February. They'd have beat them Gallus boys. They would have been on top. He'd have been moaning in everybody's ear, even women's ear. He'd have been like, you know, bitch would have had an epiphany, and he would have been like, "You, hey, hey, I got an epiphany too." Oh, she like, oh, BBC. Uh, you know, she'd have creamed her pants. You know what I'm saying? And they'd have been Eiffel Towering that bitch. You know what I'm saying? And hitting her in the back. You know what I'm saying? It would have been a real private party. You know, you know what I'm saying? It would have, it would, it would have been a private party. 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 Yes, Soraya you know knows saying? about that. Soraya knows about that. Soraya knows about well, she, she's fact, going, she's never had her going. career. She she was she was with one nigga and one cracker. Tiffany Tiffany looked like she could take a, you know two black pipes. You know what I'm saying? You know she got. Mandy knows titty. about that. Mandy knows about that. Mandy you know knows. blokes. No, you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying blokes. Jake Mama know about that. You know what I'm saying blokes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, whatever, man. It was a hook match ain't gonna move the needle any. And then uh, what do we have after that bullshit? Booty Storm versus Riho. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's Booty Storm. I mean, I felt like there was a promo. Did we not talk about the promo? Black Magic crack of shit. I don't give a fuck. No, no, we don't care about that. But I feel like Jamie Hayter said, like, if Soraya could see some bitches tonight. I felt I, like I, that was. A- it was Tony with uh, Hayter and the doctor. They're going to oh, be yeah, watching yeah. the match. And then they eventually came out. I just skipped no, it because it was so I short. Really, I don't care about that shit either. And then, I mean, I mean, at least Julia, Julia got to speak on the Black Magic Cracker shit promo. Who? Yeah, yeah that bitch. Uh, you know the disrespect, man, because all Tooth Ava be getting mad lines on NXT, and this bitch Julia been with this shit ass company for three years, and she don't get no lines. She don't get yeah, no we can't, lines. We can't, get, we can't get Sabrina the fucking black crack of witch. Some yeah. TV. Can't get her no line sticks, but this bitch got 87 teeth in her mouth, and she talking every fucking week on NXT. You know what I'm saying? Just showing all them shit. <laughs> bitch be like this. We in the schism. Well, they, they got to get the time. We got all roots. roots. Four roofs, one and tree. one tree. I mean, like, well, they're probably afraid if they don't give her TV time since her dad bought the fucking XFL from Vince. Yeah, they're probably boy. afraid he's gonna fucking buy NXT. And she's gonna horror be movies, man. This bitch got more teeth than the Critters Ball in Critters <laughs> 2. You know what I'm saying? Just running over crackers eating skin. This bitch, this bitch got more teeth in her mouth. Yo, man, Grant could steal 48 teeth, a whole new set. For his mouth, and this bitch would still have at least three more sets of teeth in her mouth. You remember this, when Pennywise opened his mouth? Yeah, this bitch, this bitch is this bitch got more teeth in her mouth. If you counted the teeth in her mouth, it'd be higher than my credit score right now, nigga. This bitch got more teeth, okay? Then then more time than Jake's mama been fucked by black men on a weekend, and you know in the summer. I swear to God, this bitch has got too many teeth. <laughs> In her mouth. Yo, they just take teeth out of her mouth to make dentures for old people with, you know, that soft denture set. This bitch has got like 685 teeth in her mouth. Okay, or, or probably pussy probably has teeth in it, nigga. I don't even know. Okay, you can't stick your dick in that or pussy got teeth in it. Okay. She got more teeth than what the, what Vince is asking, what the asking price is to for the, buy. For the poon job. For the poon jobs with the oil company to buy that shit, okay? And, but yeah, this bitch Julia getting one line. One goddamn line. This, 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 we set up what a whole week. We spent seven days building this fucking match, and I don't even care about it. And that's how much I care about that shit more than Riho and Booty Storm. And it was Booty Storm. I was just looking at Booty Storm the whole time, and then I was hoping for the hip attack, but the bitch dodged it. No and then disrespect Riho. to the doctor, but no man, this, was, to the doctor. this was yeah. This if was if the doctor was in it, I, I definitely would have watched. Yeah. And I tried to because it was Booty Storm. You know I love me some Booty Storm. It's the Reho effect. It's the Reho effect. How are you going to get beat up by an eight-year-old? How are you going to lose to an eight-year-old and make it believable? Get the fuck out of here, Tony Skeets. Fuck anyway, 
Uh, moving on, it's the Tag Team Casino Battle Royal. Jesus fucking Christ. Dark Order, the KFC, Austin yeah. Open, Lucha yeah. Bros, Top Flight, Kingdom, yeah. Orange yeah. Cassidy and Danhausen, 2.0, Butcher Trash. and Blade. Trash. Uh, Maria eats a double super kick. Guns walk out. Dan Housen eliminates Butcher and Blade to win in the eh, subitious way. Uh, Jarrett and Jay jump them. Acclaim Tron goes up. The music took a seven Mississippi to start. And then, like every ATW, Cluster fucking Mon! Gotta botch them all! Yeah, time was killed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go through this as well. MJF and Brian Danielson hype vid. We got to see Parkinson's Dean Malenko comment. Uh, Brian Danielson out to the ring. Renee interviews him. They high five. Uh, Man, that was a pretty stiff high five, Tony says. Yeah, he is stiff, Taz says. That just made me laugh. Uh, yeah. Brian brings up his dream speech again. MJF comes out and Brian says he hasn't earned anything, says he earned his fiance leaving him. Uh, Brian has fought for everything. He's in AEW because he wants to fight. He drops an F bomb. The crowd goes nuts. MJF didn't get to say one, one word. word. Uh, six? Who cares? Okay. Sticks the tag team casino battle royal and then the main event segment. I guess. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, there's this shows the difference between the difference in two go home shows, and one of the go home shows isn't even a fucking pay per view. It's a fucking TV live event. This shows the difference. And two cards, two shows for go homes. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's true. I had heard, I had saw supposed pictures for that AEW fucking go home show, like that San Francisco show, and it didn't look good. The crowd did, it didn't look good at all. I mean, fucking a. Three time winner, three, three times in a row. Not one, not two, but thrice, thrice. Winner in a row, Booker of the Year. This is the fuck shit that we got. I mean, this is an insult to fuck shit. <laughs> no, seriously. That boy, ain't lying. that boy ain't lying. This is serious. You had two battle royals, you had a fucking revolution. Because fucking ladder match winner to face Samoa Joe next week. And then you had a fucking casino royal battle fucking royal rumble fucking battle tag team champion. Fuck, you had this man. And then you had fucking fucking Brian Danielson, MJF, final fucking face off. And MJF doesn't get a fucking word in. Oh, Brian Danielson, he fucking, he fucking nuked MJF. He couldn't get a word and he walked off. Okay, yeah, sure, okay. Outside, I got, I got nothing, Mangria. I got nothing. I really don't. There are more homeless people on the streets of San Francisco than there was that attended that San Francisco Dynatrash. These are... Uh, you got a battle royal, and you got uh, Brian Danielson screaming to talk about. What do you? No, nah, I got some bullshit and some trash. I already told you. You should have said that at the beginning of the show. Like, this whole and... fucking show. This whole fucking show is shit. First of all, first of all, yeah, yeah. First of all, you got this battle royal shit. All they want to talk about every time Top Flight is out there is how they won the. $300,000 battle royal and cost the, the Kitty Fondler Club $300,000. Uh, you got you got fucking uh, Aussie Open who've been killing it on the New Japan independent oh, scene. Oh, Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! You had the fucking kingdom show up. 
near the end with these crack ass crackers coming out. You got fucking uh, who else was in this bullshit? Dark Order for the second time, uh, Top Flight for the second time, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the best friends aren't aren't cleared for for for. How long are you gonna hold these niggas? Here, nah, fuck that shit. I'm going off the break. How long are you gonna hold these niggas? Huh? How long are you gonna hold? Your fucking original tag teams who've been with your bitch ass year one. Okay. Look, look. All right. You, you gave it to Lucha Bros. They had a great run. They beat fucking uh, the Young Cucks to win their title. Sato, Meadow. Great, great run. Great run. They beat the Young Cucks at a, at a pay per view to win the title at a crazy cage match. Fuck shit. Awesome. Awesome. All right. You had your original shit. With old ass, dead ass from the grave, Undertaker having ass Christopher Daniels, and that nigga is Scorpio Sky, who is black ass, he's been on TV for a year and a half. Yeah, yeah this this damn this damn honorary, I think honorary white man, because he likes to surf and be out soca. He ain't no true nigga. He ain't gangbang. He ain't shot they eight crackers. Bring him back in the month cocaine. of February. They couldn't bring him back in the month bring of February. Bring him black, couldn't do it. No, nah, because Tony Skeets ain't doing no kind of fuck shit like that. You got these crackers. You had two random crackers, Kenny and Hangman. Huh? You ain't got no private party winning the titles. You ain't got no best friends winning the titles. No Santana and Ortiz winning the titles. These day one ass niggas who showed you love, gave you contracts, and then re-upped with your bitch ass. But you want to have some niggas like... Like, like, like Jeff Jarrett? The fucking uh, the fucking Ring of Honor ass. You know what that nigga's name is. I can't think of his name right now. I'm you drunk. The Kingdom, slap nuts. The Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. But then you want to have these these motherfuckers already in your tag team title match. The fucking guns who won it on a fucking on a fucking Wednesday. You can't even win it on a pay per view to take the titles off the acclaim during Black Hittery Month. <laughs> during Black. Hittery month? You know what? Let's go back for the Black Hittery months. You know, you've been fucking with the acclaimed on Black Hittery months. I remember when you had nigga hating Sting beat the acclaimed by himself last on year. Martin Luther King last year. birthday. Yep. yep. On Martin Luther King birthday. I swear to God if I knew that episode, because I know Mangry clipped it. It was a short. You better check on my review. I know he clipped it. It got 800, had, 800 views, Cesar. You had <laughs> nigga hating Sting beat the acclaimed on Martin Luther King birthday. And now you got now you got the guns, the trash ass guns, also beat the acclaimed during Black Hittery Month. Yeah, no, no wonder, no wonder you do coke, nigga. Oh, you just love that white in your system, don't you? Don't you hate you got that permanent melanin skin? You got that permanent melanin in your shit, Tony Skeets. You fucking use a sand nigga. And you need to recognize that you's a sand nigga. And you need to accept that shit. You ain't white, bitch. Just because you got just because your daddy got a billion dollars. Don't make you right. Don't make you white and it don't make it right. <laughs> okay. And then you gonna have scrawny ass Dan Housen. And beat up Orange Cassidy on the, the greatest run of his life. Win this shit to get in the match, and you gonna have you gonna end the show with a cluster fuck you mon and some bullshit Daniel Bryan promo, huh? Huh? MJF don't get a word. MJF don't shut the fuck up. I follow him on Twitter. I know he don't shut the fuck up. He just gonna come out there and take his jacket and his scarf off and then walk away. This bullshit show. We should have started with this bullshit. I, Father, Father Freddy chose it. So. Fuck that nigga. I said it. <laughs> I said it. Fuck him. Fuck his mama too. You want to talk about <laughs> some? You want to talk about some ninja on ninja violence that we're gonna have going I'll on? That nigga. I will stab that nigga in the middle of the ring. Well, right. let's just move on to predictions. <clears throat> Why? I don't even want to predict this. I, dumb I know. Shit. No, I, I understand. Uh, and I'm no stealing one, this shit. I ain't paying for it. Y'all know I'm stealing. 
That's the only way I watch ATW. I don't uh, pay shit on ATW. ATW's revolution, which I'm glad I was in jail for a couple years ago. I uh, worked on no particular. Y'all, if y'all want me to watch live, you better Venmo me $70 to watch this piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm stealing this shit. Uh, hey, at least there's not no fucking exploding barbed wire fucking match that's gonna and, be. And made. at least, and at least there's no Jade Cargill match too. So if if uh, hey, I, might, I, might actually, I might actually look forward to seeing her. If I'm gonna pay fifty bucks, I might I as well see fifty bucks of Jade Cargill sassing her ass out there. I'd rather is see Jade injured? Cargill's OnlyFans for fifty. Why bucks. is she not on the card? Is she injured? I don't know, man, because it's Tony Skates. Who's she gonna face? Oh, who's she gonna face? Because it's March. Yeah, she's uh, in no it. particular order. Uh, we're gonna start with Mark. By the way, I had no idea this was happening. Mark Briscoe and the Lucha sure. Bros versus Davari and the varsity athletes. I don't give a uh, fuck. Three but drops be Mark Briscoe. of monkey piss. But of course, they're gonna have Mark Briscoe. Why would you have Mark Briscoe lose ever? Yep. He ain't gonna yep. lose until it's for a title. Uh, but yeah, the Briscoe and the Lucha. Oh, and the Luchas. Hell and yeah, the Lucha, yeah the Luchas. Ray Phoenix gonna get that dub. Man, so, uh, risk of this shit. We, yeah, we're all yeah, just, yeah, get, this just right, Mark. Unanimous. unanimous? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Let me make it official. I was already writing it before you did. Yeah. Cesar and six. Okay. Yeah. All I right. don't even have it on my fucking sheet. Wikipedia. The yeah. I looked it up. Um, we're gonna kick this. Okay, this is the actual serious match here. Okay. There we go. There we go. You know what? We might be unanimous on every fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, it's the final burial match. It's the captain. Christian Cage versus Jungle Jack. I'll go first. Okay. The captain. Yep. Will whoop that ass because yep. the captain has been gone. He ain't gonna return and lose. The yep. captain. He he's a veteran. He's got tricks up his sleeve. Yep. Possibly Dark Saurus shows up, helps him out. Yep. Who knows? The captain ain't losing. The captain is going to win and bury this this idiot and hopefully he cuts his hair off. Uh so I vote for the captain, Caesar. Yeah, uh Jungle Jack's gonna win. What? Yeah, yeah, CC. I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around. You have to think like the best booker. So you have to think wrong. Okay. Explain Jungle it Jack it will win this bullshit. It's dumb, yes. Because the captain's been whooping his monkey ass. You have to think about it. The last three pay-per-views, the captain has won. And even when Luchasaurus fought him, Luchasaurus won. The best booker is going to pick Jungle Jack. Okay. All right. I, it's I, not who I want to win. It's not I who know. I want to win. I, I know, but I, you're not even considering that Dark Source is going to help him. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's the best booker, Mangria. Okay. I, I'm, I'm right, making it official right now. Write it, bitch. Write it twice. All right, I'm putting it twice. Caesar, Jungle Jack. All right, Sticks. Yeah, come on, man. Come on, Sticks. Sticks, you're 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 an encyclopedia here. How is this gonna go? What's gonna happen? We got our Captain versus um, Tarantula Hair Jungle Jack. Tell us how this is gonna go. We don't even know. Uh, uh, is it gonna be a? Is there buried alive match? Is there gonna be a mound of dirt? Are they seriously ripping off WWE at every turn? What's going to happen here, Sticks? Cesar ain't lying. Oh, no, 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 no. Sticks. No, no. Seriously, seriously. I told you. Christian, Christian Cage could lose this match and still come out Wednesday night looking like a million dollars. I told you. Jungle if Jack Christian Cage loses. We're not going to see him again. Oh, no, no, no. He'll go to WWE. Good. He'll go to WWE. Good. He'll go to WWE. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, who, does, who does this hurt more if they lose? I think it hurts Christian because he just, no. came, he just no. came back. It hurts Jungle he Jack. He just came back. 
No, because it hurts Jungle you know, Jack and it hurts Jungle Hook. Jungle Jack is considered a pillar, and he loses to Christian Cage again in the final burial again. match. Again. He, what do you do after with this? You, do you have him take off time for six months and hope that when he comes back that he catches fire? This is what he, the best booker is going to do. The best booker is going to have Christian win because of Lucha. You know what? That should just be my caveat. Dark Soros interferes. Fine, He's right. have, hold right. on. Hold on. He's going to have Christian win. And then the feud continues in a steel cage match. They're going to be like, well, no one can get in or out. It's going to be a steel cage match. It's going to be fair. I'm That's the best booker of the year. That's your WWE year brain. In a row, we're going to have Christian versus that's Jumbo your Jack. WWE brain. Steel cage match. That'll be the end of this. Or, or blood and guts. WWE I don't brain. know. I don't know. Blood and guts. Whatever the fuck he comes yeah, up with. That's your WWE brain. Well, I've been raised on WWE. What do you expect? <laughs> you have to you have to think wrong because it's the best booker. You All right. So six, you want me to make it official? Jungle Bitch, Jack. I, I told you right twice. I got Jungle Jack because right. he could probably, after this match, he could probably go after and try to get Luchasaurus. No, he's gonna go after Orange Cassidy or something. He's shit. going I'm after gonna... a championship if he does win. He's gonna go after Wardlow or yeah, maybe fucking... tag team championships, maybe tag team, or maybe maybe we get a swerve and he goes for the FT Dub Championship. I like how we're arguing about this garbage match and this garbage promotion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's so great. Well, it's so well, great. I'm, I like, this. I'm like two 12 packs deep in Miller Light on, on a Saturday. <laughs> Our conversation about this is more entertaining than the entire episode. The entire episode. Of of trash. Yeah. <laughs> I love arguing about <laughs> predictions more than I love. Yeah. Keep going. Because we got we got all night with these predictions. I'm going to purposely argue every match. I'm going to make this interesting. As you up, should. As up you next. Should. Up next, uh, my pick is solid. I'll even go first. The Ocho Jericho versus <laughs> Absolute versus Rick and Starks. You might you might as well write the same shit across the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ricky Starks is is a tripod nil approved guy. This it, is it's like it's like the doctor. We ain't picking against her. You ain't picking it. Oh no. Maybe Ricky you Starks. picked against Ricky Starks. I picked time. against him once and I was right. This time, Doesn't matter. This it time, matters. I'm going to pick Ricky, but I think I'm wrong <laughs> because remember, Ricky and Jericho fought already and Ricky beat him. And they, they, they made an, they, they pointed it out explicitly that the JAS is banned from ringside. So what does a, a fucking 20, 30-year veteran do when all of his backup is barred from ringside? They jump him the night before, so he loses on Sunday. He brings he, show, he shows he, up in the he shows up in the crowd in a lucha mask and hits him with a fucking Judas effect. He's going to use a fireball on Ricky when the when Tranny Manson is trying to reapply all her makeup. He's gonna use a fireball on Ricky and pick up the win. But Ricky deserves the win. He needs to end this story. This is not entertaining. This is actually hurting Ricky Stock being involved with Jericho in this bullshit. It should have ended when he beat Jericho the first time. This is ridiculous. Ricky is better than this, but I'm picking Ricky to win regardless. Uh, Sticks. No, Ricky, Ricky will win, and this will elevate Ricky because they'll be like, all right, he's beat a world champion twice. Now he's in the upper echelon of world champions. He may have lost to MJF once. If MJF retains the title, and like he's going to be gunning for MJF. He's going to start beating top tier talent. All right, this, hold on, this... hold on, Cesar. Sticks. Uh, who's going to win this? What What are your thoughts? Oh come on, it's fucking absolute. He's a fucking he's a tripod guy. I mean, to make this fucking guy have to jump through hoops to face Jericho, who he beat already. To make him jump through hoops to uh, for us to get to this, and then him outsmarting Jericho to make it so the JAS is banned from ringside. I mean, we're probably gonna, we're all three probably gonna get fucked on this, but I I can't I I don't I can't pick against Ricky. You know the who Ricky absolutely. should be fighting? He should be taking out Samoa Joe and getting the TNT Championship. I want Ricky to hold all the titles at least once. 
Well, I don't want Ricky to get his fucking neck broken against fucking Samoa Joe. But he should he he's better than this is, is my conclusion. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, you know, I agree with you on that. Maybe maybe he takes out the winner of that match after fucking they they destroy powerhouse Hobbs. But I don't is know. The, is the next one double or nothing? Is that the next pay per view? Who gives a fuck? Yeah, who fucking cares? But probably. But probably. It, I just care it, about Ricky. Is it, is it forbidden garage door? <laughs> no, it's got to be forbidden door. Got nigga said. Niggas said forbidden garage door. That you forbidden, might be right. Or might maybe, be right. maybe it's forbidden outhouse. Who fucking knows? Well, Caesar, uh, is yeah. it unanimous for absolute? Yeah, Rick I already said it. Ricky, keep going. Up next, the trios titles, which means so much. The elite, the the elite versus the black magic crack of shit. Caesar, you get to go first on this one. What say you? Did he freeze? No, I didn't oh. freeze. Just don't give a fuck <laughs> about Black Magic. He Crack. Was like, he was like, or the elite. <laughs> I don't really give two fucks about anything, but fuck the elite. Know. Yeah, okay. I fuck the elite. But if they're gonna win, but yeah, Black Magic Cracker shit. That one bitch ain't said. No more than fucking 10 words all year on fucking TV, and these crackers gonna show up a week to build. God damn, yeah, it's gonna be dumbass elite. <laughs> they interrupt her more than they interrupt Kenzie on NXT. Uh, st- <laughs> sticks, uh, we got the elite. I hope, I hope she shoots black skeet in all their souls <laughs> versus the black magic crack of shit, gentlemen. As a man who's won. And is in a short time of being with the tribe. Oh, big black magic oh, cracker shit! Get out of here, gentlemen! As a man who's Come got on. some, he's over your bragging. Got some, got some dubs in the bank. Okay. As a guy who, as a guy who's got some dubs in the bank. Here, here we go. I, I would like to think that that gives me a little bit of cushioning for when I can go off the reservation. Oh, big black magic cracker shit! Oh no, no. I think they have to win to stay relevant. Yeah, that's a good only, that's a good point. <laughs> you can only parade them out there before before got before fans start actually listening to us and being like, fuck this shit. Why are they even still together? I mean, okay, at some okay. point, Kenny, Kenny's gotta go off. He's gotta mm-hmm. go defend that US championship for New Japan. Sure. The sure. Bucks actually have to become a legit tag team again. Wait, and Cesar, wait Cesar, let him lock sure. it in. No, and no, 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 no. I, I'm letting him talk. I'm yes, letting him yes. talk. I'm letting him talk. So, gentlemen, I believe that this is when you need to actually make them a legit faction, trios, legit wrestlers in this brand. So, gentlemen, as a man who's won numerous predictions. Sure, 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 sure. sure. I don't know many agree. It's like, yeah, fuck you. I hope this is your final burial. Legit, your final burial. When it, I'm it getting you. Dark Saurus to attack you. No. I'm picking House of Black to dethrone okay. the elite. Who? On, 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 some, on some, some random bullshit, you're picking House of Black. Sure. But even though, even though you said... House of Black to win. Even, even, even though you said, even though you said, this is how you make them relevant when you know... When you know that best friends aren't relevant, private parties not relevant. I had that whole spiel about tag team matches who were there from day one, who have been there and who've shown up and who who've been wrestling over the years. You're cashing in on EVPs who don't lose unless they want to, and they just got them titles back. And their first defense against nope. well, the first pay per view defense, the first pay per view defense, really their first pay per view defense because they did, they they lost them on a vacant, won them shits through TV, and now their first pay per view defense. You're picking the the challengers who they have a week long storyline with to win. Hey, hey, gentlemen. If I pe- be if I pick House of Black and they win, is there do I even need to be making predictions anymore? No, because that okay. means you think like the best booker. That means you're thinking no, no offense. 
But if if I pick House of Black and they win, do I do you just like mellow with jerseys in the rafters? All right, Cesar. Do you just go well, ahead and gotta make my, this man lose, my, Cesar? Do I take my hat off and throw we, it? In we the gotta rafters? humble this man, they, Cesar. They we gotta, we gotta humble this they man. Beat, though. Who have they beat? Top flight and AR Fox. We're gonna make sticks. Who also watch. lost to the champs. We're gonna make sticks watch every fiend match, every CM Punk match. We're gonna make them watch Doink. Hey, hey boy, um, hey boys! If I win, y'all's in some fucking shit. You mean you had to start some shit? You had to start some shit. You don't want me to start going through some fucking cock. Paper. By the way, I, I have a match for Cesar that he's gonna love, and I, 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 if I ever win, I cannot wait to hear him or see him tweet out this specific match. He's gonna. Oh, love. Don't tell me, man, Greer, because I will YouTube Marco stunt matches on <laughs> and find them. No, no, me. it's a good one. It's a good one I have for you. I'm not punishing you. This yeah. is a good one that we've brought up several times that I want you to comment on. Trust me, sticks. You're getting all kinds of dog shit. Yeah, um, see, I only give y'all good matches when I win because I want to see what the fuck y'all want to tweet about. Uh, yeah, the elite are winning and retaining. Um, up next is a AEW Women's Championship Triple Threat match. It's the Hater versus Soraya versus Ruby. We can all agree it ain't Paige. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, wait a minute. Let's. How, can we all pick different people? <coughs> I'm not picking Paige. I'll pick Paige. I'll pick Paige, and you two pick the other two. <laughs> oh, my God. What the okay. fuck? Are you really taking Paige? I'm picking Paige. You're crazy. Uh, Cesar, who, uh, pick either Hater or Ru- Well, Ruby. <laughs> no, but pick either Hater or Ruby. No, I mean, Hater's not losing the title. She's only had, like, two or three title defenses. It's going to be Hater. Hater. All right, Sticks. I mean, you're over here bragging. Sticks over here bragging and rubbing our faces in his victories. Where is you? Seriously, I took house, but and you haven't even heard my fucking caveat yet. You picked Ruby, and you're gonna make me. You're gonna make me take fucking Ruby. Pick Ruby. Hey, hey, hey! hey. You were bragging. You went on for five minutes. I've been winning left and right. I've got a cushion. I'm going to pick the most ridiculous yeah, shit Green, because if Green I win, why should I even Six, be predicting anymore? Six, why should Six, I be predicting? No, no, no. I believe Green the exact words were in this last one. You're going to pick against the EVPs that are making their first pay-per-view title it's defense? Fact, it's a fact, though. And you're going to make me take fucking the next fucking... That's me agreeing. The, the next That's logo for fucking Bucky's? No, no. 15 matches. Take a bullet. No, no, no. Back he that said, shit up. Give he me said the fucking. logo for Bucky's. He said no, the no. logo No, 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 no. no. Give me Ruby Soho. Because if she fucking wins, oh, motherfuckers, we better be doing a fucking revolution. <laughs> Post show tripod, and I will make it so you guys will never ever want me on television again. That's Mangria. That's oh, Mangria. Well, do it, gentlemen. He said the, he said the logo for Bucky's. The logo for Bucky's is some funny shit. That's some funny shit. Give so, me fucking Bucky Soho. Go well, ahead. I don't know. I don't know. Well, Sticks, I don't know if Mangria knows about Bucky's. No, I don't know that. See, he don't know about Bucky's. That's a down south. That's a down south Midwest no, thing. No. Hey, hey, Mangria, when you get done, before you before you have supper, Google Bucky's. No, no, no just look, that. look. I'm, I'm gonna find that shit and send it to her in the chat. Um, gentlemen, up next is going to be. Yeah, we had a good B movie horror segment on NXT. This is going to be a bad B movie horror segment because of the amount of blood that's going to be spilled. He's always wearing a hat, sticks. And they, like if he wasn't wearing the hat, it would be way more funnier. It's a Texas death match. Nobody cares about this bullshit. Between John Moxley and Hangman Adam Page. Sticks. 
Who's gonna die in this match from blood loss? Both of them. Yeah, I, I, I have Hangman winning this match. So, I mean, okay, I, I, I could, I could see. Here's the thing. This is the other thing I thought about in my drunken fucking stupor. Of uh, how else do you get the actual elite together with Hangman? You could have them all lose on this pay view, and you have them get back together. But I mean, Tony Skeets ain't gonna do that. So why not have fucking John Moxley lose the Hangman and have him go fucking ex- absolutely nuts and just start fucking beating the piss out of people, cutting them and all that shit. So why not go ahead? I I enjoy chaos. Hangman Adam Page wins. And God, Tony Skeets, if you fucking watch this, Tony fucking Skeets, you fucking watch this. Mm -hmm. Hangman Page wins. Bring back the fucking nameplates. Bring back the goddamn nameplates. You tell them twice. Exactly. Uh, Cesar, Hangman or Mox. Oh, nigga, you think I'm going to go against some motherfucker from my own state? From my own state? A drunkard from my own state? So this John is Mox Hangman's win. match to win, okay? They gave Mox the win in his hometown. This is neutral territory. Somebody got to bleed. Somebody got to die. Hopefully, John Moxley can take some time off if he loses. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Okay, the nigga been bleeding on AEW television. For the last eight months, okay. In matches that don't matter, <laughs> don't even fucking. You know, you know. I was on some. I was on some TikTok, and I saw this wrestling bitch. Fuck it, I, I gotta digress. I'm making this shit 18 hours. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck y'all. Y'all gonna watch every fucking second of this bullshit? Okay, I watched this bitch on TikTok. She's talking about how she don't want to go to an AEW show, maybe because of the fans in the crowd. Now I am like, no, the fans in the crowd are pretty cool. It's the fans on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook who are assholes. The IWC. Yeah, and a lot of people were agreeing with that. And some cracker wrote in there, like, yeah, I get it, because the fans in the crowd are probably going to beat their meat when John Moxley bleeds. And some dude was like, he don't bleed that much. Nigga, I almost threw my fucking phone. Some dude was like, yo, he's only bled on, like, the last four out of eight shows. And I was like, nigga, even if that's true, that's half. Half. How many people have bled on WWE free TV? Nobody. Not you many. usually save the blood for a pay-per-view high event match. That's when you save. That's when you do the blood. That's when you do the crazy shit. That's when you have the, the cracker shit. John Moxley be bleeding in a regular ass match. Just so happens somebody hits him on the turnbuckle and punches him in the head. This crack of bleeding everywhere. And I was like, dude, that's why I can't be on the internet talking to you fuck boys. Because I <laughs> swear to God, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would look up your profile, find where you live, and just roll up to your house and shoot you in the neck. <laughs> You're lucky if there's four shows in a whole year in WWE if there's somebody that bleeds. I can't think of the last time somebody bled. I can't fucking. WWE, I can't. I can't. Think I of don't it. know. But um, yeah, Caesar. I mean, okay. So I I am cursed with the WWE. no no. I digress. I'm not picking against Hangman. Hangman, yeah, Virginia drunkard. He gonna come out there super lit, not feel no pain, and he's gonna get the dub. Hopefully, this makes John Moxley like go on vacation or something. I don't care. But like, the yeah, Hangman John, gets to the top. Yeah. This, this is where we could get Hangman back in the main event caliber. Other than maybe, I don't know, man, if MJF pulls out the win, fucking Hangman versus Daniel Bryan again versus, like, that's going to be the next person to fight for the title. Moxley needs time off to re- replenish his blood supply. Uh, re- nice. Fucking rebuild your iron. Like, get your vitamin C. Like, get your life together. Uh, continue your sober living. Um, put Hangman over. My WWE thinking is that Mox beat hangman in a bullshit way the last time so hangman is going to make this an epic victory he's gonna beat the fuck out of john moxley yeah, with like three fucking uh clothesline shits we got buckshot lariats we got dead eyes he's gonna make him bleed more than he's Let's ever shoot this nigga. 
He's going to stab him. He's going to uh, do a drive-by in his locker room. He's going to do and Drew Sword and stab his motherfucker in the neck. He's going to get Renee and powerbomb Renee on him. I, I think Hangman is going to make this uh, one memorable victory and um, a flat-out statement that he is coming for old MJF. Good. The so, Red man. Cross. The Red Cross has given Tony Skeets money to have Hangman win because they're running out of fucking blood to give Moxley after he fucking cuts himself every goddamn Wednesday, Friday, and every Sunday four times out of the year. They're running out of fucking blood. So they're going to give Tony Skeets money. Send this guy on vacation. We can't fucking keep giving you blood. We're out. We're we're tapping out faster than Peter Avalon is. Mox bleeds on BTE. He fucking bleeds in his cameos. He's like, hey, this is John Moxley. Uh, just listen to the tripod. Oh, and then he fucking falls over. Yeah, you're right. Well, if you asked him, he probably would. Mox, Mox it's only is an extra ten dollars. Mox is already blood on all access, and they haven't even showed on fucking TV yet. He it. bleeds during his hefty commercials. Now, um, up next is for the TNT Championship. Oh, Samoa Ho versus Wardlow. Joe, Joe, um, Joe. Warlow's gonna kill you. <sighs> yeah, flip the coin, you bitch. You don't know what to pick. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Heads. Father Freddy, thank you. Heads, Samoa Joe. Oh, 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 oh. Sticks, you down for some fuck shit? Fuck it. Let's go, boys. Yeah, everybody, everybody flips. Flip the coin three times. Three Freddy times, flips. fool. Uh, Samoa Joe, heads, word low tails. Sure, flip it. For That's you. That's you. It's gonna be Samoa Joe. All right, right. Mangria, Samoa Joe. All right, Caesar. Heads, tails, yeah, flip it. Heads, Samoa Joe, tails, word low. Word low for Caesar. Okay. It's gonna be word low, watch. Ward Six. dog. All right, flip it. If, if it says ward dog, it's really gonna be ward dog. It's fucking Wardlow for sticks. God damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Fuck shit. You assholes. All right. Um, that's go. fate, baby. Hey, that's fate. Fate literally chose this round. That's fate. The fuck, Father Fiddy? I thought we were boys. Nah, bro. You don't like you. Hey, hey, the god of drip has just spoken. <laughs> Up next is Yo, for, if Wardlow really wins that match, I'm gonna cry. ATW I'm gonna Tag Team Championship is the fatal four way. Oh, the, under, the undeserving guns versus the acclaimed versus Jarrett and Lethal versus Orange Cassidy and Dan House and Sticks. Who do you choose to win this fatal four way? <sighs> as much as I hate to say it. I gotta go with the guns. I think they oh, retain. I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> oh shit! And I, I will, I'll even throw this. Dan Housen's taking the pin. This is the only reason why Dan Housen's in this match. Man, is guns not retain. Fun. Cesar. No, no. I, I want you to pick first. Me? <laughs> yeah, I want you. To pick. <laughs> Jared. I bet you both. You both are probably hoping I was going to pick fucking Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lee. That's who I just picked. Cesar, who's going to win this? <laughs> I already know it's going to be Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lee. What? Really? His... No, 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 no. I thought you were no. going to pick the acclaim. No. Hell no. Hell no. Because his father just died. Oh. <laughs> They're giving this shit to Jeff Jarrett wow. and Jay Lethal. They're giving him the Briscoe treatment. He's going to fucking win. This is going to be the biggest piece of shit that the best booker does of the whole weekend. Because no, nobody likes the guns. Nobody respects the guns. And they won it on some bullshit. So they can lose it on some bullshit. And nah, I they're going to retain on some bullshit. They're going to retain on some bullshit. I agree with Sticks about the Dan House and eating the pin. Because why else would they have these idiots in this match? Yeah, and I feel like, Dan, I feel like Jeff Jarrett's Gonna stroke Orange Cassidy and then Jeff Jarrett and then Jay Lethal will hit the fucking all the, lethal the, the fucking lethal yep. injection. 
Mm -hmm. Well, plus there's a guitar, Cesar. You got to re remember, the guitar could come into play. He's going to guitar Billy Gunn or one of the acclaimed, and then that's how they're going to win. Yeah, you're right. And, and them, get, them getting into this match was the fucking the, the honorary thing for his dad. Them getting into this match was the thank you to his dad. I mean, no, no. You had to have two heels and two faces. And they weren't going to do it with the Butcher and the Blade originals because Tony, Tony Skeets hates originals. You know, he, he only likes the new toys. And, yeah, they, I mean, it made total sense. Total sense. So, gentlemen, we have the main event now. And for Roadblock, the fuck shit certified match was Dijak versus Tony D. This right here is going to be my fuck shit certified match. There is yeah, no I way is losing this championship. He just got it. Tony Skeets wants to make MJF happy. Uh, MJF, um, he, he's been prepping. He's getting better and better. His promo just got better with this last one. It hasn't been that great. His in-ring work has been decent as of late. This is a hell of a test. Brian Danielson is the only veteran who's living up to the word of putting over younger talent. And I know he he took out a whole bunch of people to get to this point, but I truly believe Brian Danielson respects AEW and he wants to put MJF over, make him look more legit. Uh, I, that being said, MJF retains in an Iron Man match that we're never going to hear the end of on this coming week's uh, Dino Trash. MJF retains the ATW Championship. Sticks, what say you, brother? Oh, yeah. There's no way he's losing this. I mean, it'll be, if at worst, they'll have it go to like a, a draw. But even then, he retains. So, I mean, that's, that's uh, if you want to kind of prolong him and, and Danielson so you get something else uh, planned out. But MGF's going to retain this. I mean, unless... Unless you think that this isn't going anywhere and you think uh, having uh, Danielson is going to be do better for you, but, I mean, he just got it. So there's no way you take this off. Him. And Sticks, you know why. You know why he's going to retain. Mm -hmm. See, uh, uh, I, I, I my cap really kind of maybe says something a little different, but. Okay. Cesar, are we unanimous? Yeah, no, yeah it's unanimous, man. Okay. Yeah, it's but let me, I want to hear your real thoughts, Cesar. Who would you want to win this? Honestly, MJF. Okay. Honestly, MJF. Oh, that makes Fairly. sense. The, yeah. yeah and I, like, he just won it. Like, for him to win it and then lose on his first title defense is dumb. But I wish MJF would wrestle more. No. You know, like, he only had really that one eliminator match against uh, Take a Shitter. And then, uh, and now he's fighting Danielson. He's lesnaring us. Yeah, the way Danielson is hyping up the match, it's a it's a hour long Iron Man match. You're not gonna last. Uh, yeah, I I, I would want MJF to win, even though I feel like his promos are kind of shit though. But yeah, the talking shit, and I feel like a better person could take it from MJF. Because the next pay per view could be like three months away, so yeah. if he has it for half a year, he won it kind of like the end of last year, and if he takes it to June, when the next pay per view is, and somebody beats him there for, I wouldn't be mad at it. Forbidden. Like, I think, like I think the only way you have him lose this is if you got like if you caught wind that he's not going to resign with you, yeah. and you're just going to fucking bury him. Like you're just going to bury him. From here for the rest of this year, leading up to him his, and his contract being gone. So that way, maybe you water it down. So that way, you hope maybe WWE or any other promos don't want him. But I, I just, I just don't see them doing that to him. Talk yeah. about WWE thinking sticks. That's a McMahonism right there. But I digress. You guys already know my caveat. Dark Saurus helps Christian win the final burial match. Mm -hmm. Um. Cesar, do you have your caveat loaded? Uh, hold on, I'm not gonna write down some dark source. 
Uh, I'm going to take an easy route. Oh, God. Trick helps mellow. No. You know that's right. <laughs> uh, the Doctor Helps Hater. Oh. Keep her title. Okay. We'll take a little easy route on that. Doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, thinking about that, Cesar, it could be just the opposite. Because remember, we, we, pointed out, we pointed out her facial expressions when Hater yeah. didn't even consider it the could doctor be. for the title. But I feel like the doctor hates Tony and Soraya more, so she'll help Jamie keep that yeah. title and then try to take it off her. All right. Shot, bitch. All right, Sticks. Bless well, us well, here. With well, plus that, uh, that all, sees ours, it also plays for when she turns on, on Jamie. Because like we talked about when she named, when she went ahead and said she was going to make a triple threat, kind of the face roll. That uh, that the doctor gave. She's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Seriously?" But gentlemen, this might be. I, I don't know if you might say this is out of left field. It might not be. We get done with the main event. MJF is celebrating, and then you hear, "No oh, fuck." Look in my. Oh no. You saying CM Punk returns? Oh no! CM Punk returns. You say CM Punk post match returns? Yes. Oh my! Because God. I believe this is what I believe that's who MGF was supposed to be for the AEW Championship. True. And this guy is starting to kind of pop back up on. A, he's starting to kind of pipe, pipe up a little bit on social media. So, post match, CM Punk returns to AEW. God, I hope it's not true. <laughs> oh my God, I hope not. Um, all right, there we got all our. Look at Cesar is so disgusted. He went to go throw up real quick uh, after that caveat. Well, ladies, he's, he's, gentlemen, he's on his way to Iowa to come slash my tires, probably. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again uh, for listening and watching. I appreciate it. Larry, the sheriff, JH, all y'all. I appreciate the pretzels. Thank you all. And until next time, we will have a review of both events, a review of both shows. It's going to be a fully loaded show. But like we always it might, it might be, it might even be a retirement episode. <laughs> Big ups. Make us a retirement. The stag beat. Stag beat.